it's about, um, what time is it now? Sorry, well, about 50. 10 minutes to 12, 11.50. Uh, it's Thursday uh, morning. And we're at the home of uh, Colonel Leon uh, Williamson. And the address is 1511 East Virginia Road in Fullerton, California, in uh, Orange County. Right. So officially. Uh, so welcome on behalf of the California Military Museum and the uh, California Military History Educational Project. That's what we're doing oral history on today. And I was going to start with, uh, with uh, Colonel, if you could, for your, in your own voice, uh, uh, give us uh, uh, your full name and, and where, you, where you were born and when. Right. My name is uh, Leon Morris Williamson. I was born in a small town in uh, Michigan uh, by the name of Tecumseh. Uh, which was uh, named after uh, Chief Tecumseh, a famous uh, Indian warrior. Um, the town was a prop approximately two, about 2,500 population. Um, we had probably 30 in our graduating class, a very small town. Mostly uh, it was agricultural uh, people, were, uh, were in the farming business and um, uh, that's all I wanted to say, I guess, about mm -hmm. the town. And, and you graduated uh, at your high school about what? what I graduated in 1935. And what time of month was that? Uh, that was in, in June. In June. Now, that was in the middle of the Depression. Right. Uh, could you tell us what it was like in a small town in Michigan, a farming community? Uh, what was it like uh, for a family? And tell us about your family in the yes. Depression. Well, we had uh, five uh, uh, children in our family, um, two brothers and uh, uh, a sister. Uh, Let's see, what do you want to pick that one up? Um, the Depression days. <clears throat> uh, all of us kids uh, did work uh, to bring in money. Uh, we did. We de uh, delivered papers and uh, mowed lawns and washed windows and any any job that come along, and we'd work uh, out in the fields uh, weeding uh, carrots. Uh, we paid uh, ten cents an hour, and we worked ten hours a day, to get a dollar. Um, then we had to walk about two miles to where we had to go to work. So it made a pretty long day, mm -hmm. but uh, in those days, uh, a dollar you could buy qu quite a lot of uh, uh, material, anything you wanted. Uh, as I remember looking back, uh, my aunt gave us uh, some uh, money when she came to visit us, and I think it gave us a couple dollars, which was quite a lot of money, and we could go out and buy a a pair of white pants, as I remember, for about a, a dollar and a quarter. Uh, gasoline was uh, around 16 cents a gallon. Um, you could buy 10 cent hamburgers. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, you could get quite a lot for, for, for a dollar that we would have to work for a, a day for. Now, uh, question, on, uh, why did the, uh, all the children have to go to work to support the, help the family and all? Uh, wasn't there things like welfare and uh, unemployment? No, there's no, uh, no unemployment or welfare. Uh, my father was a salesman, traveling salesman, and uh, he um, had had a, uh, and he, he was a real estate, uh, invested in real estate quite heavily and lost his shirt. and. Uh, uh, during the depression, so he went back out, out on the road and and then brought in the money that way. And, and uh, since there wasn't any help, and the family did it themselves, or was there help from right. your other family members too? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, what other relatives were in town or near you? Well, yeah, you know, we had uh, uh, my father's uh, brother was there. He had two brothers who was there. Um, one of them had uh, five children, um, some were about our same age. Um, the grandfather uh, passed away uh, when I was very young, 
And uh, I had a, a grandfather on the other side who used to visit mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit. And um, when he died, I inherited his Model T Ford. And um, I painted it all up and uh, reupholstered it and spent a lot of time on that, uh, well, keeping it running. Well, you were pretty close to your grandfather. Tell us about your grandfather. Well, he was a, uh, uh, he was a uh, uh, post, uh, he delivered uh, mail, for one thing, and he was a uh, carpenter. We used to visit, uh, as I said, we used to visit there uh, on the holidays. And uh, I um, <clears throat> rode to uh, Florida from Michigan around 1,300 miles in his Model T. And uh, my father hired uh, somebody to help drive uh, down there. It took us five days to uh, travel the 1,300 miles. And uh, it was quite an experience. I was about 12 years old. And uh, my first experience in seeing what mountains look like, and and uh, it was a uh, quite an experience. Well, how did that, that change your view of the world then? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how would that have done? How did that change it? How did, how did you become a different person from if you'd never left Tecumseh? Tecumseh. Well, I really can't say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't see how. Uh, it made uh, big changes. Uh, I uh, had a uh, lot more responsibilities uh, for, uh, than uh, uh, most of the 12-year-olds uh, uh, that I knew. Well, why, why was that? Uh, well, uh, I had to uh, help take care of my, my grandfather, for one thing. And uh, uh, we, uh, we lived uh, together uh, down in Florida for about... Um, <clears throat> A month and a half, and then my father and my mother and my other brother came down, and uh, we spent the winter down there. The rest of the family stayed up in Michigan. Uh, I had uh, my two brothers uh, uh, both served in the, the Navy in uh, World War II. Well, that's about all I can say about that. Well, when, in high school, you were you uh, you had a, a certain image of things you wanted to do in high school. Uh, you were uh, how old when you graduated? And what did you have in mind? I was uh, 17 years old, and I was uh, very interested in swimming. Um, we didn't have any pools, uh, any pool locally, and uh, we used to swim in the lakes and um, ponds and uh, gravel pit, and. Uh, I wanted to uh, uh, be a good swimmer, and uh, when I went to Michigan State, I uh, tried out for the uh, swimming team, and I made the team uh, with no, no previous uh, uh, experience. Uh, but uh, I did uh, I, had, I did a lot of swimming in the in the summers. So those were competition in uh, swimming. Uh, yes, you, you traveled uh, to different uh, areas of right. competition. Yes. Before. Where did you compete with? Oh, we uh, we competed with University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, and we uh, uh, in Chicago and uh, uh, Ohio, uh, Indiana. Uh, you met a lot of different swimmers and different people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so did did, how, did you end up uh, majoring in physical education? What did you no, what did you uh, major? No, I uh, I took a, a course in. Uh, High school, I told about different uh, uh, professions uh, uh, where you could earn a living, and I was particularly inter impressed with the uh, uh, forestry service. Um, I thought that'd be great to be stuck out on a, you know, in a mountain and uh, look for forest fires, and and uh, so I uh, enrolled in uh, in the uh, forestry school. Michigan State College, and um, graduated uh, with a degree, MS uh, degree in forestry. I was interested in the forestry utilization merchandising end of it, and um, uh, at those days uh, there weren't very many jobs available. So uh, during the summers I worked as a lifeguard in the state parks, and. Uh, I pretty much put myself through school. Uh, 
do, doing work. Um, in fact, uh, when I went to college, uh, which was about uh, 60 miles away from my hometown in uh, East Lansing, I hitchhiked up there with my suitcase and uh, what little money I'd saved or uh, earning and uh, uh, found a place I could rent uh, a room for three dollars a week and um, I uh, worked uh, uh, NRA, uh, uh, na uh, a uh, national uh, agency to uh, assist uh, students in work and I did a lot of typing and uh, uh, any jobs I could get, and uh, I did some. I had to borrow from the college uh, uh, to help pay for tuition. And uh, when I got out of, a, of school, and, and when, I, when I could, I paid the college back for the the loan. Well, when you so you finished school, and the jobs were tough to come by. Now you graduated from college one year. I graduated from college in 1939. 1939. And. Um, as I said, uh, jobs were very difficult, and uh, I uh, had wrote a letter to uh, a bunch of uh, uh, businesses in the South because um, in those days uh, uh, they were harvesting uh, pine pulp to make paper, and it was a new it was a new uh, adventure, and I thought uh, this would be a good possibility, and so. I uh, uh, looked up a driving agency in Detroit, and they uh, would have uh, jobs where you could drive a car to Florida or to uh, Texas or to California, and um, you'd get free transportation. And uh, so I did that. I um, lined up this uh, job uh, to drive a. a a um, automobile to uh, Texas, uh, and um, started looking up some of these people I had written ahead and told them I would be coming through there, and there was just no jobs available. And um, so, when I got to uh, Jacksonville, Florida, I got uh, picked up with somebody who was going to be going down to uh, Miami, and uh, so I rode down with him. And uh, looked up a fellow that had g I'd gone to school with him at the college, had dropped out in his junior year, and uh, he uh, was staying at a uh, where a group of guys, uh, probably oh, probably twelve guys, uh, had a rooming house, and I got me a room there, and went and uh, went out and looked around for a job, and got a job uh, at the Miami Biltmore Hotel as a lifeguard. And I figured that I'd uh, uh, probably spend another six months uh, just finding myself before I would pursue my <laughs> my uh, business of, of forestry. Anyway, uh, while I was staying in this house, uh, uh, I met a fellow by the name of Daniel Iverson, who uh, uh, had just recently been accepted as a naval cadet, and uh, he had a uh, marine uniform, a PFC's uniform, I thought was pr looked pretty nice, and uh, uh, he was. Uh, it was. Uh, I think. Uh, I think they paid around. Uh, I think it's around uh, sixty dollars a month or something like that. Uh, when we. Uh, uh, so. Anyway, uh, I was uh, back. Uh, back. Uh, I'll back up a little bit. Um, while I was this lifeguard, uh, while I was a lifeguard there at the Mel Biltmore Hotel. Um, I wrote a friend of mine that had gone to uh, played basketball in high school and and other sports, and uh, and uh, then again at uh, Michigan State College, and uh, he got a job as a. Uh, uh, working as a fireman, and he got his uh, a room uh, for free, and so uh, I uh, 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 looked him up, and uh, and uh, I could uh, I had to buy my own cot, and uh, so I uh, joined the fire department for uh, three years.
uh, at, while I was working at the, uh, while I was going to school. So I got free rent. But anyway, uh, when I got to Florida, uh, uh, working at this uh, hotel, um, I wrote him and uh, told him that I had a job down there for him if he wanted to come down. So he, well, he, he, he quit his job and came down right away. And what was his name? Yeah, his name was Douglas Leonardson. And uh, so uh, uh, after talking to Iverson and seeing his uniforms and, and uh, the possibility of uh, flying, uh, the two of us, Doug Leonardson and I, uh, went out to Opelika and applied for uh, uh, to get in this uh, aviation training program. And uh, we were both accepted, um, and we reported uh, to uh, Pensacola. Uh, well, we uh, uh, reported to Opelika for one month's uh, pre-flight training as uh, PFCs, and um, then. Uh, we both passed and went on to Pensacola. Uh, I was at Pensacola for until this is at, uh, 1940, uh, 1940, 1940, and um, I uh, entered uh, Pensacola around April, as I remember, and I got my uh, wings um, and. Uh, Second Lieutenant's Commission on the last of December of the 40. Uh, I was uh, shipped out to the uh, West Coast, uh, to uh, San Diego, and uh, shortly after that I was transported to uh, uh, Hawaii, uh, to the Marine Air Station at EVA, and um, went out uh, on the Carrier Enterprise. Uh, we trained uh, <clears throat> there in uh, at EVA uh, in dive bombing and um, navigation and uh, uh, shooting, uh, field carry landing practice, and uh, uh, until uh, Pearl Harbor. Now what, kind of, what kind of aircraft did you first uh, uh, qualify on when you were uh, as a cadet? And how did you learn? Uh, what kind of things did you uh, aircraft did you fly then? Uh, I flew the N three N, which was a, they called the Yellow Peril. It was a biplane, and uh, uh, then uh, after uh, we qualified that, we were uh, uh, trained in uh, fighter aircraft. And one of the aircraft I flew was very interesting, as a F four B four. What was it? F four B four. And um, that was an open cockpit, and I can remember that I had, um, I, I'm quite tall, 6'4", and uh, mm -hmm. I fit right in that cockpit. It was almost like I was uh, diving off a springboard, <laughs> and uh, that was, uh, it was quite, uh, quite exciting. And tell me, what kind of a plane was it? A single engine? Or? A single engine, uh -huh. fighter. And, was a, and that was a biplane? That was a bi bi no, no, yes, a biplane. Mm -hmm. so right. And you, you had to uh, crank, crank up the wheels. And uh, uh, it was a, a lot of fun to fly. And that, and that was the uh, highly maneuverable. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the things I've seen is uh, some of the aircraft that we had later, uh, these others were not as maneuverable at all as those aircraft. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the difference in how to fly uh, some of the later aircraft like the uh, SPDs F4. and some of the others? Yeah. <clears throat> Well, uh, it was uh, rather a slow plane compared to uh, uh, other fighters that had flown, like the F-4U. And um, uh, it was a, a plane that they'd used, uh, I think, down in Mexico. The Marines uh, uh, were involved down there. It was a pretty, pretty old plane. And it, but it was fun to fly. Pardon? But it was fun to fly. Oh yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Now, when when you were there, uh, now you were at Pearl Harbor, and you were learning. Uh, you qualified, you said, in, in this uh, field carry landing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then and then, what kind of aircraft were you flying when you were Eva? Uh, I I was flying uh, SBDs, SBD ones and twos. Uh, can you describe what a what an SBD yes. one and two is? Uh, it was a. Uh, 
two-seater. We had a uh, radio man in the rear seat, and uh, he was also trained as a gunner. And um, we uh, had dive flaps that uh, you could dive a uh, 70 degree dive almost straight down and uh, uh, but slowed your, uh, slowed your descent and uh, uh, allowed you to be able to maneuver to uh, hit the target. Um, it was uh, not considered a fast plane. We would uh, probably cruise about a uh, 140 knots, and I had a stall at a speed of about, um, I think it was around 65 knots, something like that. And uh, while we were training for field carrying landing practice, we had to uh, uh, fly around the circle, and we had a somebody that was a director with the flags, and they they would. Uh, tell us whether to go up or down and when to cut our gun, pull the throttle. And uh, while we're doing that, we're just flying just above uh, stall speed. So about 65, 70 knots or something? Yeah. Now, when you were coming in, tell me what's it like uh, first time landing on an aircraft carrier? Uh, very exciting. We, uh, <clears throat> I landed on uh, several different carriers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but um, uh, we had, to, as I remember, we had to make around uh, ten different landings to to qualify, and uh, it was uh, your adrenaline really shot up on taking on both landing and taking off because uh, you had to come in at the stall and uh, you're uh, you're put your life in the director in the director's hands really when they gave you the cut and when he. When you, he gave you the cut, you're supposed to do the cut. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that, what does it mean when he gives you the cut? What do you cut your in? Yeah, just pull the throttle back. Yeah. And, and then, and then uh, you'd hook, uh, you'd hook a, a wire, and uh, dry up, and it had a barrier that uh, up ahead. That in the event that you didn't hook a wire, that uh, kind of bad if you ever, <laughs> if you didn't hook the wire. Yeah, describe how the fuselage was and how the hook was. Pardon? Can you describe the fuselage and what the hook was, how it was handled? And how uh, well, we had a, uh, we had a uh, lever that we'd, uh, dropped, uh, we could drop the hook. And uh, uh, they had these cables strapped about maybe about four cables. And uh, uh, if you didn't uh, hook one of those cables, then you'd go into the, the barrier. So it was, it was a dangerous practice, really. And so you, you had to land in what kind of a area? Was it 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet long? Oh, no, probably, uh, I'd say probably uh, 50, 60 feet, I suppose. So you had to be very, very accurate. Yeah. That's right. Now, you're, you're, so your first one was really quite exciting. Yes, it was. Well, yeah. everyone, every field carry landing was this exci exciting. <laughs> because you're really always vulnerable. Yeah. Now, did you witness quite a few mistakes over the years that have happened? You were telling about some uh, Well, I, I, I don't think I actually witnessed any. Uh, I heard a lot about uh, people that, that had uh, uh, given the wave off and they didn't take it and uh, they, uh, Crashed over the side, and uh, they always uh, they always had a. Uh, as I remember, they always had a destroyer uh, following an aircraft carrier uh, to pick up anybody that uh, didn't make it. And so when you we call, that, uh, hmm? is that the air conditioner? One minute uh, of uh, ambient sound.
one minute, ambient sound, no refrigerator. Now, because we were, and we were talking about the kind of aircraft that you were uh, learning to fly, and mm -hmm. and the changes in the newer aircraft. And uh, what was the aircraft that was kind of the norm when you were first learning to fly, and and the ones that you started to learn that were brand new when you were in Hawaii? What was kind of the norm? Well, SBD was a, a very accurate dive bomber because of the dive flaps. Um, they made other uh, uh, SB2Cs, other dive bombers, uh, a, a, a little larger, um, had more uh, uh, electronic equipment in it. Even some of them had, uh, uh, so you could uh, determine uh, uh, objects, you know, with uh, What do they call it? I can't, I can't remember. Kind of a radar type thing? Yeah, a radar, yeah. It's not a radar. It's a brand new type Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when you were, uh, now we're, we're talking about 1940 when you first joined up. Mm hmm. You said about 16 bucks a month. About 60, uh, I think they uh, gave about $60 a month, as I and remember. What was it up to when you were, uh, when you were uh, now a full fledged qualified pilot at, uh, in, at EVA? What were you, remember what you were earning? Um, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Can't remember. And, and I that wasn't very much, but uh, <laughs> uh, it was enough to uh, have a good time with anyway. And you were still single, so yeah. That's good. Now uh, uh, you were uh, tell me about the time you first met your wife. Well, uh, I was invited to a uh, Japanese party, um, a Japanese house uh, by an, uh, a woman, a Doctor Faust, and. Uh, she had brought this uh, whole building from Japan and uh, had rice mats and they had uh, uh, paper, uh, sliding paper screens and all this kind of stuff. We all had to take our shoes off when we went, when we went there. And uh, she had invited uh, um, probably 12 of us fellows, second lieutenants, out for the party and she got the girls. and. Uh, so uh, we had uh, played different games, and uh, uh, so I met Pat, my wife, uh, Patty, at that time, and uh, we went. Uh, we were the only two that went out, went swimming after the uh, after the after the party, and uh, so anyway, um, I uh, she moved uh, from the dress that she'd give me. And uh, so I didn't see her for about two or three months. And I ran across somebody on the street and had all went to, at, the, at the party and uh, asked her where was this girl what lived. And she gave me her address and I looked her up and uh, asked her for a date. And she didn't remember uh, what I, whether I was tall or uh, short. But uh, in those days, we went to the Royal Hawaiian. Uh, it was a place to go for dancing. and. Uh, We'd dance right out there on the beach, and uh, uh, we would always dressed in formals. And uh, so anyway, uh, we uh, dated uh, quite a bit, and uh, uh, kind of strange. Uh, before uh, 
just the uh, night before Pearl Harbor, um, we were, they decided to let more people off the base. And uh, I was one of the lucky ones to get off the base. And um, so I called Patty out for a date, and she said uh, she didn't feel well. She had a cold. And uh, so I called up another gal, Dahlia, that I had met, and uh, I got a date with her. And uh, as we were approaching uh, the uh, going up the steps of the Royal Hawaiian, uh, I ran, uh, ran across this uh, fellow that Patty would have been going with, and uh, uh, too. And uh, so he says, "Why don't you come on down and uh, join the family for uh, with a, a drink? We're all down having a have a, uh, a nightcap." So we did <laughs> went down there and joined them, this, this gal and myself. And uh, Patty was sitting over there with a sweater on and <laughs> really embarrassed. And uh, but anyway, that was the last I, I saw her uh, for, for quite a while. Well, oh, that that night you you were together at a family gathering. Yeah. Was it his family? Yeah. And uh, her her uh, her uh, sister's uh, husband was a, a Navy captain. And I told uh, told him that that night, uh, the night before, about my experience uh, out at Eva that when I was a second lieutenant that um, I had a, a duty, and uh, we had, had uh, uh, dispersed our planes all over the field a week before, and we had them all in, in uh, one area, all real close together before the, before the attack. And, but anyway, I was out uh, walking around uh, the, the uh, area, and checking the, the things and uh, I saw this Japanese that was uh, uh, right at the entrance where uh, uh, railroad track entered our uh, compound, uh, our uh, Marine Corps Air Station. And those, in those days we didn't have fence around the, uh, the area. And this uh, Japanese was looking down the ra railroad uh, and off the, which was off the uh, d uh, r nearby road, and so I went back and uh, uh, loaded up with my uh, my 45 with the bullets and uh, went out and challenged him. And um, he said, "Well, me me fix me fix Monday." And so I went over and took his license number, and I was telling this Navy captain. Uh, about this thing, he said, "Don't worry about it." He says, "When anything ever anything ever happens, they'll pick those guys up right away." Oh, that was quite a, quite a that experience. Was just a few days before. Yes, that was the night before. Oh no, no, uh, I think it was two nights before. Two nights before. Now you mentioned that the aircraft were all dispersed into their revetments. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so we didn't have revetments. No, we just uh, we didn't have revetments. We uh, just dispersed around the field. And uh, the uh, last minute, they decided that uh, it'd be very hard to protect from sabotage, so they decided it'd be better to put them all together, uh, which was a bad decision because it, they caught practically all of them on the ground. Yeah, Japanese now let's zeros. Let's go back to December the sixth, uh, that Saturday night, mm -hmm. and you were uh, you were uh, with your uh, uh, date uh, Dolly and uh, yep. and your. Uh, Bride to be, uh -huh. and a family gathering at the Royal Hawaiian, mm -hmm. uh, and it was uh, uh, dinner and dancing and a lot of uh, friendship. Yeah. Now, uh, what happened that night? Did you stay overnight at the hotel? What happened? Yes, uh, I took this uh, uh, gal home and went back to the Moana Hotel, and some of my uh, friends were uh, Iverson that my I talked you about before. I'm a good friend, uh, and a, a couple other fellows. Uh, we uh, Heard this explosion. I, would, I had my own room, and they had their own room. But they came down to get me to go out for breakfast, and uh, which was after we'd heard uh, some of the explosions, and we just thought that the army was on maneuvers, uh, which they did every Sunday. They used to go out and uh, do a lot of shooting and stuff. But as soon as we got down, we found uh, downstairs. We found out what happened, and we. Uh, we all had cars, and I had a car that I think I paid about seventy dollars for, a old Viking. Anyway, uh, made by Oldsmobile, about nineteen eighteen, I guess. 
But anyway, uh, this uh, they had a lot of old cars out there about that time. Uh, the uh, Navy people would take them out there and they'd just leave them. So anyway, um, so I headed back, uh, trying to go, uh, go out to uh, Pearl Harbor, and uh, that was all closed off, of course. And then I went up around Aia Heights and up where the uh, uh, Naval Hospital was. And as I was up there, uh, the second attack was just being completed, and they were still firing uh, an aircraft uh, shells. And I could see uh, the uh, Arizona uh, burning, and um, it was a terrible sight. Um, so I headed on back to the base, and uh, uh, I had uh, had a good camera and a, a good graphics camera and a good. Uh, 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 movie camera, but I didn't want to stop and take any pictures. I just wanted to get back to the base, and uh, I was uh, was challenged on one of the sh on one one of the uh, bridges that uh, apparently they uh, called the ROTC or somebody uh, or immediately, and uh, I was challenged there, and uh, of course went on through, and uh, I bet the, got back to the base and found it was uh, they, uh, they destroyed practically every, all our aircraft. Another brand new aircraft, right? No, they weren't brand new. No. Uh, and you, but you, and you had about eighteen aircrafts. We had uh, <clears throat> uh, probably sixteen. Probably sixteen. And almost all of them were destroyed. Yeah. So then, what what happened then? Now, try to okay. that same day. Uh, what was going on? Nobody knew what was going on. No. Uh, that that evening, uh, uh, one of the carriers. Uh, uh, had been out. To, they were going to take one of the terrorists. Going to take one of our squadrons of uh, dive bombers out to uh, Midway, and they were almost there. And they got this word of the attack. They came back, and uh, uh, that evening uh, they sent some uh, Navy planes back to to uh, uh, Pearl Harbor, and uh, they were attacked. Uh, they were shot at. And uh, I think one of them was shot down. And uh, people were pretty trigger happy. I remember in the evening uh, uh, we'd hear shots all over different places. That, uh, there, there was a lot of uh, cows that uh, were uh, left out to uh, uh, scrounge food, and I imagine they probably killed some some of these cows. Some of that shooting was people. Anything that moved, they'd shoot at it, you know. Um, and so it was It was pretty, uh, you didn't know what was going on? No. And how did the orders come down, filter down to you, so what you should, guys should be doing now? Um, I, don't, I don't recall. Well, what, I what, did, orders. What, what did you start to do, or what did they have you doing as soon as you got back to the base? I, was, I can't remember anything in particular. Uh, uh, I know that we uh, didn't have any aircraft until the uh, the carrier came back with the with the dive bombing squadron, and which was uh, I'd say a, a couple of days after uh, Pearl Harbor, and we had aircraft. Mm -hmm. And so, what were you doing in the intro? Huh? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we couldn't do very much. I know that. No, no planes. So when those aircraft came in, uh, did they fly them off the carriers to Elo? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and what was the uh, what, how were you assigned to some of those aircraft? How did it work out? Part pardon. They had pilots to those assigned assigned to those. Oh yes, they, they had, had marine pilots assigned. Mm -hmm. So the new were you assigned to, the, to one of those? No, no. Uh, I was in a different squadron, and uh, it's kind of kind of interesting um, when. Uh, when, before uh, Pearl Harbor, we wanted to qualify on the uh, Enterprise, and um, also the fighters uh, from EVA went out to qualify. And uh, <clears throat> they kept us aboard the carrier after we'd qualified uh, for several hours, and they finally decided uh, they would send us the dive bombers back to EVA, and uh, they kept the fighters uh, aboard. And they were, went right on out to Wake Island, and they flew off off the carrier, landed at Wake Island, 
and we had sent uh, an advance party with the supplies at both Midway and 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 uh, Wake Island. So uh, they took the, some of the supplies and moved them to Midway. And uh, these uh, fellows uh, from the fighter squadron, uh, they didn't even take a toothbrush with them. Uh, they had nothing uh, on the personal uh, property. Uh, but they went on out there, and uh, of course they were uh, attacked and, uh, and again captured. And uh, a lot of them left their wives, or had their wives back there at, uh, at uh, Pearl Harbor area. And uh, so uh, most of the wives went back to the States. But it was quite a quite an experience. Know the people that you knew. Yeah. I mean, you would have been uh, on that same group if you'd get right. If we did, if, if they decided to send the dive bombers. So uh, a few a few days later, they uh, uh, decided to uh, send the uh, uh, SB two U threes that were had been aboard the Enterprise. They uh, loaded them up with. Uh, Drop tanks and they over at uh, Heckam Field because uh, they had a long runway there, and they uh, loaded these uh, drop tanks up with fuel. They took off and uh, flew to uh, Midway uh, at uh, about 1,300 miles. One of the, one of the longest flights a single engine aircraft had, had done. Uh, so it was kind of a first, a first and experience. And that was the, the uh, SVD 2U3s. Uh, right. Now, tell me about that. That's a different kind of a plane. What was that like? Yes, uh, it had a fabric fuselage, and um, it was slower than a uh, SBD. It had about the same stalling speed and uh, uh, probably, probably 10 knots slower uh, than cruising. Um, it had uh, a rear, a rear seat gunner, same as SBD, uh, and also he uh, operated as a radio man. Uh, the uh, fabric on that uh, SB2U3 was uh, very old and uh, rotten, and uh, uh, you couldn't dive the thing over. You couldn't dive. A, over a 30 degree dive, you had to make a glide bombing run, and we practiced that uh, glide bombing run. Uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't make that flight to uh, uh, talk about uh, Midway. Uh, Ivers and I and, and uh, uh, several other pilots uh, later were transferred out there by uh, a uh, de conferred destroyer with a bunch of uh, other uh, Marines, uh, ground personnel. But anyway, uh, we uh, uh, this was in probably oh probably in January uh, that uh, I got out there. So we trained out there uh, in the SB two U threes. Uh, we found that we couldn't dive the bomb the thing uh, because we had to because the fabric would rip, and uh, so where it had rips, we'd uh, just bandage it up with uh, uh, white uh, tape. Uh, duct tape. I have a picture of one of those. Where is it? It's over oh. Let me get that picture. I thought it was there. Is it there? Oh. It's over. I'll get it. It's on the cover of the. Oh. A picture of the SB 2U3, which uh, we used in the Battle of Midway. And uh, you can see the uh, white stripes on uh, going around the fuselage uh, and, uh, to cover up the tears. Yeah. Um, now, those, those were not. Uh, uh, unit designs. No, tell no. Me what kind of tape? Where'd you get the tape? Uh, it was regular uh, uh, white uh, duct tape. They used, uh, well, I guess, uh, for, <laughs> for for taping things together. I guess uh, seemed like it was used in ordnance. I don't know why I would be using ordnance stuff, but uh, uh, we got it from ordnance. But anyway, this uh, this aircraft was. Uh, <coughs> Uh, very difficult to uh, maneuver, or very difficult to land. It was a, it, it kind of sat high, and uh, it was very easy to ground loop. And uh, 
a lot of the new new pilots that we got in uh, did some ground looping and but uh, it was a lot heavier. It was a single engine aircraft and uh, with a fabric fuselage and and uh, it uh, got us there. <laughs> now, why? why uh, now, you didn't have any other aircraft, so that's why you used this this aircraft. Yes. Right? Well, no. Uh, uh, we had uh, Admiral Nimitz come out and visit us uh, uh, at Midway uh, about a month before the battle. And he could see that uh, we weren't very well uh, prepared. And so he sent uh, 16 new aircraft uh, from the Navy out uh, uh, by uh, ship and uh, also uh, about 16 new pilots. And uh, these pilots are, had just recently uh, graduated from Pensacola, had very little training. And um, so we had the about 11 SBDs, or about 11 SB2U3s that were available during the attack, and about 16 uh, SBDs, all from one squadron, VMS B241. And uh, we took off, uh, uh, oh, uh, these uh, new pilots, uh, uh, new people that came in, they didn't even have a, a chance to uh, get checked out in the SBD or the SB2U3. Some of them, they, because of the shortage of gas. Uh, Tell me about that. Uh, how okay. Was we, uh, uh, they had uh, a big gas t uh, storage tank over over on uh, uh, Sand Island, which was, was the main uh, island, and they had uh, pipes to distribute gas and and. Uh, They'd uh, wired up this uh, tank so in the event that uh, the Japanese took it, they, they could uh, explode it. Well, they got a short and the, and the thing, uh, and the whole thing exploded and we were down to uh, 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 servicing the uh, planes with the, uh, gasoline with 50-gallon uh, uh, drums and they had to pump all the gas out manually. And so, because of the gas shortage, uh, they, uh, these people couldn't get checked out in the aircraft. And they had never flown a, 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 a dive bomber uh, with, with flaps. So the commanding officer uh, uh, decided that we'd uh, make the attack uh, glide bombing, and, uh, which is, uh, was, wasn't as accurate and uh, much more dangerous. Uh, what's the difference between a power dive bomb and a and glide? Well, how, how would you describe that? Somebody didn't know how to fly. Okay, uh, you would uh, a dive bombing. You would uh, peel off uh, over the target, and uh, practically a, a, a look like a, a straight down deal, but it actually is a, a seventy degree uh, dive. A glide bombing, uh, you'd make the run uh, away from it. And uh, uh, Clyde bomb uh, at probably uh, oh, probably a twenty degree dive, and uh, as I say, it was much more dangerous. Uh, you had to uh, get down just over the ship uh, at about a thousand feet, and uh, you drop your bomb. They're a lot more volatile than an aircraft. Yeah. Right? Yes. Oh. Mm. to uh, chat with you about this. Uh, we were just in the process of describing, because uh, we're, we're on take two uh, with uh, uh, Colonel Leon Williamson, uh, and it is uh, the 30th of May, uh, 2002, and it's about uh, 12.45. And so I wanted to continue on where we were, uh, Colonel. You were mentioning that, that the um, that it was dangerous to use yes. glide bombing versus the dive bombing. Right. And, and why was it dangerous? And was it their aircraft well, was dangerous? No, because they could, they could uh, their, their anti-aircraft uh, fire and their, their firing from the, from the ship with uh, 
uh, much more accurate coming in at uh, at a low angle like that. Uh, a dive bombing uh, uh, run is a considerable, considerable safer run. For, for being more accurate. Yeah. More accurate. Now, we were, we were there now, we know that uh, uh, history tells us of when the battle at Midway occurred, but uh, you didn't know when that was going to occur. And, no. Uh, what kind of preparations were taking place? If you look back at it now, well, uh, what was taking place a few days before? What were you doing? Well, they uh, they made revetments out there. They dug, uh, they had the uh, CBs out there with the equipment, and they, uh, uh, well, they got their bulldozers and bulldozed up big revetments, probably uh, oh, 15 feet high. And then the, the uh, plane was ramped down so that you had to, uh, it was protected. And uh, uh, we, uh, uh, see, what else did we do? Uh, they had, uh, I know we ate, we, we ate two meals a day. We had breakfast and uh, a, a late lunch. No dinner, and uh, uh, other preparations. Let's see, what else did we do? Um, oh, we had to get up. I know one thing. Uh, we had to man our planes uh, one hour before sunrise and one hour after. One hour. Uh, before sunset, until uh, after it got dark, and um, uh, so do you actually fired up the engines, or did you yeah. set that? Yeah. So the engines were operational mm -hmm. and yeah. sitting there mm -hmm. waiting, uh, because you, uh, if they, if you had, an and we sat and we sat in our cockpit and waited for directions, and uh, they, uh, we finally. Uh, they called us, uh, I think, uh, a day before, a night before, or two nights before the attack, I think, and told us what was coming. Uh, five aircraft carriers and uh, several uh, 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 several battleships and uh, uh, troop ships, and so we knew that what was coming there, and we didn't know the Navy was out there. We thought it was just us. So, and uh, we had had a lot of us had had friends that were captured out of wake, and we thought we were going to be left uh, in the same situation. And uh, but there's nothing we could do, but except to just carry out our <laughs> our duties and uh, hope that we could uh, do as much damage as we could. Well, if you had uh, how many aircraft did you know that you had total? We had uh, 11 uh, SP2U3s, which is one I flew. I was a second uh, in charge of the second division, and um, they had the 16 SBDs, and um, we uh, got out uh, uh, at Midway. Um, I was one of the last ones to take off, and as I was taking off, I could see the approach of the Japanese uh, planes in a big V, and uh, so we proceeded out about. 15 miles uh, north of uh, uh, the island and uh, rendezvoused and the SBDs took off. Uh, they were faster and so they were separate. So we had two different uh, flights, really. And we were both uh, uh, rendezvoused the same area. Mm -hmm. Now, so you, you saw the Japanese, you could see them in the, in the uh, sky. At, at how how high were they? Yeah, they, were, they were coming in about uh, probably 10,000 feet. And, and so when you saw them, you didn't encounter no. them or engage them? No. You no. Fortunately, we, fortunately, we got off before they, uh, but we could see, uh, as we were, as we were, uh, as we were around them, we could see the bombs were being dropped. Well, how many, how many planes do you think the Japanese had in that first uh, uh, attack? <clears throat> well, it'd be hard to tell. Uh, it was a pretty big V, a lot of airplanes. 
I would say probably a, at least 20 or 30 yeah, uh, the, the bombers that I could see. They and of course, they had the fighters too, and, and uh, our fighters were uh, at rendezvous and were up about oh, a little over 10,000 feet, I guess, and uh, they made their attack on, uh, on the uh, bombers. Um, the, uh, you might mention how that works. In other the, words, the, you were, you were, your planes were designed to go after those ships mm -hmm. and not to engage in dogfights. No, oh the no. fighter planes were designed oh, yes, to do that. Right. So they were in that designed to engage yeah. the bombers. Uh, describe how that worked. Okay. Well, the, uh, of course they uh, they had uh, they had the altitude advantage and uh, uh, they made their the runs on them uh, on the on the on the bombers and then the then the fighters uh, attack. Uh, they uh, practically all the all of our fighters were shot down. There just a few that were walking uh, next day. Um, those that uh, survived were uh, hit for hit for the clouds, uh, and then came back. Uh, their uh, the zeros were much faster than uh, faster in climbing and. Uh, uh, faster all the way around, diving and everything. Much better superior than the old uh, 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 planes, that, uh, fighters that we had, the Curtis. Uh, you know, they had, they had the advantage. And more craft at that. So mm -hmm. now, when you were, uh, while they were bombing Midway, you were en route to try and find their right. fleet. Mm -hmm. uh, your instructions were to go to the north, right? That's right. And and how far are you supposed to go when you're supposed to find them? We uh, we were given the direction of the, of the Japanese fleet, uh, and uh, it was about 165 miles. And um, everything went smooth. Uh, we were, uh, we were probably at 10,000 feet, and uh, when we got out the fleet. Uh, we could see uh, it was pretty much it was pretty much overcast. There'd be scattered openings, and you could see ships uh, there. And uh, and suddenly, as soon as we were seeing these ships, we were attacked by the zeros. And uh, the uh, I had a rear seat gunner that uh, said that we had um, one zero that made three different passes on us. Now, why they didn't shoot us down, I don't know. Whether whether out of gas, out of uh, ammunition, or uh, whether they were People returning from uh, from uh, the midway and or what, but of course uh, some of them were were hit, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, the SPDs uh, uh, found the carriers. Uh, I could uh, when we were out there, I could see off the left about well, probably about ten miles, five or five or ten. It's pretty hard to tell how far. I could see the inter inter aircraft fire, which was probably uh, being uh, fired at the SPDs, and they were they were hit by zeros, uh, quite a, quite a few zeros, and they sh shot down several of our planes. And uh, anyway, they uh, made their uh, d uh, glide bombing run uh, on the on the carriers, and uh, I don't I don't think it's, they got any hits. And uh, anyway. Uh, we lost about half of our uh, personnel, dive bombers, uh, either shot down or uh, didn't make their way back. Uh, so anyway, we, uh, as we were approaching uh, uh, the fleet and we were hit by these uh, zeros, the uh, uh, Major Norris, who was leading the divi division, uh, elected to head for the clouds. and. Uh, uh, I was uh, got distracted uh, when I saw this one zero come down and went uh, straight up and 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 uh, made, made a a uh, spiral going up straight up and uh, I was looking back at this and looked ahead <laughs> they were already headed for the clouds and I was quite a far ways behind them uh, so anyway. Uh, uh, I don't know whether this guy came back and made any runs or not, but uh, I think what it, his object was to uh, 
why he was showing off, circling, going up, straight up, was to uh, direct other uh, planes uh, over to over to this to our to hit us. Um, anyway, uh, so uh, we headed for the clouds, and uh, and uh, I uh, uh, when I came out of the clouds, I uh, saw this uh, battleship right straight ahead, and uh, I uh, I was probably about 3,000 feet, because of the bottom of the clouds. And uh, so I made a, a, this uh, glide bombing run on it and dropped my bomb. And I didn't see any more of the aircraft. Uh, I, didn't see any air, I didn't see any firing. Uh, uh, whether I was the first one to make the run or not, I don't know. But uh, the uh, other people reported being hit by zeros after they made their run. And uh, I see I didn't see any zeros after I made my run, and I headed uh, uh, back uh, towards the, the base uh, where we're supposed to do in rendezvous, and nobody joined up on me, and um, so I circled, and as I was circling, I could see this aircraft carrier off about ten miles, and what I could I could see the the zeros in the landing circle, and. Uh, so, uh, I, of course, I released my bomb, and I couldn't do anything about that. And so I headed back, and um, when I got back to uh, uh, Curry Island, I saw Curry Island off the right, and I had flown over there several times. I knew the I knew the, uh, the direction of the midway from from there, and so uh, I headed for the I headed off to to the island of Curry. And uh, I noticed that uh, there was a, a speedboat in the lagoon. Whether I think it was one of our P, uh, PT boats, and uh, he was uh, going towards Midway, and, and I circled uh, and uh, had uh, uh, one of our SP2U3 pilots that joined up on me there, and the two of us came back. But we were one of the last to arrive, and. Uh, we uh, found out that uh, we l had lost about half our pilots, and and uh, the fighters lost just about all of them, all of them. There was only about probably five of them that made it back. So, and then uh, of course uh, uh, there was one uh, uh, one torpedo bomber that made it back. That the Navy had sent a, a three. Torpedo SB uh, TBFs uh, uh, midway, and the uh, Air Force has sent some. Uh, well, I think about three B-25s, and one of those came back and were pretty well shot up. So that's quite uh, quite an experience to uh, lose a lot of friends that fast. How, how would you say the now the Japanese plane? One of the reasons you said that the, the, the rest of the squadron went out ahead is that you were kind of mesmerized by that pilot uh, in that zero. Uh, tell me about, you said that he went vertically and was spiral. Mm -hmm. uh, were any American planes you'd ever seen ever? No, never, I've never seen that been, uh, been done before, no. So you were, in fact, my, my rear seat gunner uh, was a um, young fellow uh, about 17 years old name of Dusty Rhodes. And I got together with him. Uh, I looked up, uh, I ran into somebody that had met him and uh, at one of the reunions, and I looked him up, and uh, we got together about four, about four different times after 50 years that we, <laughs> we had. And uh, I asked him about that, and I said, uh, did you uh, get any, did you get any uh, shots at those zeros? He says, you know, he says, I was a, a radio man. I said, well, I wasn't a gunner. <laughs> he was supposed to be pro he was supposed to be protecting me. <laughs> for protecting me. But anyway, I don't know whether he got any shot. I didn't hear any shots off him. But uh, he said that, uh, uh, I don't know whether you imagine this or not, but he said that one of the Zeros made three different runs on us. And as uh, the last run, he came by real fast and he was waving. And uh, I didn't see that. He may have been out of ammunition. Huh? He may have been out of ammunition. He could be. Yeah. 
because uh, you might mention that you know when they fire, you know, people think they have billions of rounds in those plans. Yeah. And uh, you have these short short bursts and, and one yeah. run and come back for another. Yeah. Uh, you might describe how that combat takes, especially because you were driving flying dive bomber, mm -hmm. which was not a maneuverable aircraft like a fighter plane. No, we, we had to stay on our, our same course, and we did, we had the only thing we'd go for were, were the clouds, you know, for defense. Mm -hmm. when, when you got back to uh, Midway that first day, you would taken off almost at dawn. Pardon? you would taken off almost at dawn. Yeah. Uh, that morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I, was, I think it's around. Uh, no, it wasn't at dawn. It was around about eight o'clock, as I remember. Mm -hmm. So when you got back after, how long did it take you to get your run, drop your bomb on that? Uh, you dropped it on the battleship. Yeah. And five hundred pound bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, how long did it take to get on the run? And, get, and return back. Uh, Probably uh, 160 miles. Probably an hour and a half, I suppose. Uh, and so, before lunchtime, you were back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all this had taken place. Mm -hmm. You lost most of the fighter planes and mm -hmm. most of the torpedo planes. Mm -hmm. uh, but you didn't find that out until you landed, and you were one of the last ones. Yeah. What, what did it look like when you're coming back to Midway? No, everything. Uh, well, there was, uh, the, the, uh, there was a lot of still a lot of smoke, a lot of burning. Uh, the uh, gas fire was still burning, and um, uh, the uh, the uh, they didn't destroy the uh, the uh, runway. They, I guess they wanted to have that so they could use it. But uh, they uh, uh, hit the marine. Uh, 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 post uh, where, where the, uh, the director was, and uh, they uh, hit the hangar, big hangar, and uh, hit our hit our uh, our uh, place where we ate uh, our mess hall. Uh, most of us, uh, uh, all the pilots live underground. We had uh, uh, big timbers. Uh, over this uh, so dugout area with uh, soil with a coral on top. And we had a ramp that went down and, and usually had about four uh, four persons in each, each uh, dugout or each uh, place. So we had uh, two different times to have a, uh, a submarine come up and uh, on surface, and uh, just at, at uh, just at sundown, and it's just before dark, and he'd uh, they'd uh, put off a few shots, and uh, it didn't hit anything as always, and uh, we never got any. Uh, and the, the, we could see we could see the, the Japanese on the uh, on the uh, on the submarine on the outside, and. Uh, uh, we never got any shots at them, uh, you know, from their our guns, and they and then they'd submerge, or they'd get a, get off a shot, and then they'd submerge. So by that, you wouldn't have gotten aircraft in time. No, but no. they kn they knew that we didn't fly at night. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but we did have to fly at night. Uh, our second, attack. I don't know if we'll go into that or yeah, now or not. not. Now I'll mention that when you when you came back and now you expended your bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just the two of you, your radioman gunner, mm -hmm. and uh, what was it like to hit a field and realize that there were no no one came back? Well, it was uh, pretty. Uh, it was quite a shock to um, learn what, what what had happened, and so few people came back. Um, We're all happy to be alive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how did you have a briefing or a debriefing when you were landed? Uh, did you need to do a debriefing. How did that work? Uh, that uh, that happened uh, the next day. The debriefing, uh, because uh, we had to 
take off that e that night for an attack, and um, uh, I had an attack the next day, and after that, then we uh, we we wrote, we wrote up our own account. Well, tell me that afternoon. Now you refueled and and rearmed, and uh, mm -hmm. how many more aircraft went the second round? First round, you had uh, two or three squadrons of fighters and two or three squadrons of. Uh, uh, of, of dive bombers. Oh uh, well, we had one fighter, well, just one fighter squadron, who was very. I said very few of them were uh, available for any more help. Now that afternoon, and, what and, happened then? That afternoon, um, we um, well, I can't remember that thing. In particular, uh, you went out that evening again. Went out that evening, yeah. What time was that? It was, uh, we took off just before sunset, and now uh, we rendezvoused the same place, about 20 miles away, and uh, took off. Uh, there were, uh, I think, only four SPDs that were available, mm -hmm. and we had uh, about four SP2U3s. That's all we had left, and. Uh, the SPDs went uh, ahead, of course, they, those are faster. And we flew out uh, through over this overcast of 165 miles. Um, uh, and uh, got out there. We're supposed to hit a burning carrier. And uh, there was nothing there. It was pretty much overcast. Very dark, out of, no moon. and. <laughs> had, we, uh, in fact, we uh, uh, so shook, shook up. We didn't even turn our our, our lights on until we were returning to our returning home. We we just flew on watch, watching the exhaust of the other planes because we thought might might be uh, 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 fighters out there. So you had none of your aircraft lines, so you couldn't see the other aircraft except through exhaust. Yeah. So these guys didn't have anything. No. So anyway, uh, after we returned. Uh, we um, didn't drop, drop, drop our bombs because uh, there was nothing to drop on. And uh, so, yeah, coming back, uh, the SBDs uh, uh, found the island right away and landed. But our the, our leader, uh, uh, Nora, Major Norris, uh, missed the island about probably 15 miles. And uh, as we were passing that area, I could see this fire off there, which was midway burning, and uh, uh, we just kept right on on on, uh, on the course at this uh, later later, and uh, Fleming, uh, well, I'll talk, talk about later. Um, he was flying number two, and I was flying number three, and we had a, f a fourth one, but uh, we just kept on going, and uh, Fleming said. Why don't we Why don't we leave them? And I said, Well, why don't we stick with them because we know where we are, and uh, maybe he'll find it. He just kept on going, and uh, we finally um, we got in the uh, graveyard spiral, which uh, when you lose, uh, you can get vertigo. You you you're not watching your instruments right, and you can you just go right on in. And anyway, we got in this. Uh, Spiral and we all peeled off, and he flew into the water and uh, was lost. And uh, uh, I had con radio contact with uh, with the base. Fortunately, I had a good radio man, and uh, uh, they gave me directions back to the base, and uh, we landed back there. So uh, his his was were you anticipated was vertigo. How does vertigo work to a pilot? And what's so bad about it? What? How does vertigo work to a pilot? What's the bad about it? The what? bad thing of, of, of vertigo oh. impacting a pilot? Uh, well, uh, they just don't believe their instruments, I guess. And uh, they just get in this spiral and go on in. Yeah, it's just uh, nothing you can do about it. No. And now, when, when you had the next, now you have, this is now evening. When you finally came back, it was dark. You left before dark, and that's eight or nine o'clock at night mm -hmm. in, the, in the uh, in the tropics mm -hmm. at that time of year. Uh, so it was probably around midnight, probably by the time you got back and yep. into your dugout. And then uh, 
four hours late, four hours later, then we're on another mission. So the, your, your ground crews refueled you, rearmed yeah. you, and so without it was a, was a, probably no sleep at all. You know, uh, four hours later, then we took off, uh, hit the uh, the heavy cruisers. Now, what time of the morning did you normally get up for that? A couple hours before. Well, uh, <clears throat> we always had to be in our planes though, one hour before the sunrise. So uh, I don't know what that time that was, but uh, we had, uh, I think, uh, about four SBDs, and uh, the, the, that were still good, and uh, probably four SB two U threes that we got. That went out on the to hit this. Uh, and you fired what? Hit this. Uh, they had two different cruisers that are about 120 miles from Midway. And, and uh, uh, they're they're still sighted, so you knew they were still there. Hmm? You sighted, so you knew they were still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and when you had that, uh, how many fighters did you went up with you? None. No, no, no fighters. No. Just the dive bombers mm -hmm. and torpedo. Mm -hmm. Just no, two, no, just, just torpedo planes. No, no torpedo. No torpedo. Just no, dive bombers. No, just dive bombers. No, uh, SBDs and SP2U3s. That's but, it. But uh, I think four of each. That's all we had uh, left. Right. And uh, they uh, they got uh, word of this uh, uh, two uh, heavy cruisers um, that uh, were what we were supposed to hit. And uh, as we approached. Uh, uh, approached uh, the uh, two cruisers. Um, they had uh, leaving an oil streak, probably a oh, half a mile or more. Uh, I found later we found later that uh, they had collided. The two had collided. They uh, uh, they heard a uh, submarine, I guess, and. Um, they made the wrong turn and and uh, collided and did damage to uh, one of them, and uh, that's the one we hit. And uh, as we were approaching, uh, they had a lot of anti-aircraft fire, a lot. And uh, tell me, how, as a pilot, how do you respond to anti-aircraft fire? I mean, what does it do to you? What is it, how does it handle? Well, we changed altitude. Uh, in other words, we wouldn't come in straight. Or they'd know they'd set the thing at that altitude, so we we changed the altitude. So we came in probably probably uh, probably six thousand feet, I guess, and started our uh, glide bombing run. And uh, Fleming uh, was leading uh, the flight, and I was uh, number two position uh, to his left. And uh, so we had 500-pound bombs, and uh, as uh, he was making his run, I could see smoke uh, coming from his plane, and uh, he uh, crashed down a, a, a rear turret, and uh, we, uh, uh, I, I went off to the left, and I had a little little puff of a cloud I could put between me and the, and the ship, and uh, I. Uh, Made my approach that way, and then I uh, released over the over the uh, uh, heavy cruiser, and um, Fleming uh, was awarded the uh, Medal of Honor for his uh, action, and uh, uh, I noticed that uh, I never noticed this before, that uh, when after I'd made my run. Uh, I saw uh, the waves look like uh, like it looked like there's a lot of uh, anti-aircraft uh, uh, stuff uh, coming hitting the water. Either that or it was a shock wave from our 500-pound bombs. But uh, until I was about oh a half a mile or more uh, beyond this uh, circle of, of uh, this activity. I don't, as I say, I don't know whether it was the uh, shock wave of the uh, the bombs that we dropped or not, because I I never noticed that before, and then I dropped a lot of bombs on ships, and uh, I think it was anti-aircraft fire. It was so much of it just and falling. It was, it was one circle rather than many. Yeah, 
He was just one circle? Well, he just one big circle? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. nice. all the way around. No, anyway, that was kind of strange. Anyway, uh, we uh, made the mistake of not joining up, which was our best, you know, after you make an attack, we, from then on, we always learned that. But we, uh, uh, we uh, separated, and uh, on my way back, uh, my engine started cutting out. I packed a medway, and uh, I'd, spotted, I'd spotted this uh, submarine on the surface as, our way, as we were going out, and he was headed toward Midway. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, when my engine started cutting out, cutting out I uh, headed over towards this submarine and told my uh, rear seat gunner to make a ready for a water landing. And uh, he got on the wobble pump, and, and uh, I uh, gave it full throttle and full rich and full RPM, everything I could give it. And uh, it took a hold. And uh, so anyway, I'd, uh, as I was getting ready to make the water landing, this thing took a hold. It was a submarine and uh, submerged. And uh, uh, apparently it must have been that the submarine that was out there uh, over hours that the, that the Japanese had, uh, had uh, 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 found out or heard. heard. So anyway, uh, I, had, I headed back to, at the, uh, the Midway at about 500 feet. Uh, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to touch anything as long as it was running, and it brought me back all the way. And uh, since I got back over the island, uh, uh, I cu uh, cut my gun just a little bit. The engine quit, so I, I had to make a dead snake landing, and uh, that worked out okay. Well, tell me that kind of plane was like a rock. I understand. How did you handle that kind of a plane? It was so heavy. Uh, did it glide in well? Huh? Did it glide in well with no power? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you made it in, so yeah. uh, with no power you didn't have any problem with locking no. aircraft on the field? No, right? I, I was up high enough so I could, uh, I could uh, maneuver uh, so that I would, wouldn't we come in too fast and, and above, above stall speed. And now that, that was really like June, the, still the best the next day, uh, uh -huh. the 5th of June. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you, uh, what happened? But now the last day, what was going on? There's still some well, work. They, uh, <coughs> still that, that was the last. That was the last. Uh, th uh, that was the last occurrence of anything. Uh, from then on, uh, we uh, started gathering up these people that uh, been when killed. Uh, 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 Inventorying their uh, their their uh, belongings and uh, and uh, arranged to ship them back to their families and uh, uh, we uh, after after that attack the, the next day is when we were uh, in, uh, were interviewed and asked to write up our our. Uh, Experiences, mm -hmm. and then uh, we stayed at uh, Midway about uh, about a week and a half, I think, and we were uh, flown back to uh, uh, Hawaii. And how did how did you know? Uh, no one really knew whether that was a victory or not for a long no. time. No. Uh, what were you told? Uh, and, and uh, what did you guys we, talk about? What was scuttlebutt? What was the rumor? Well, uh, no, we got, we uh, we learned that uh, that uh, that uh, about four carriers were destroyed, and uh, that uh, the Japanese had decided to go back to Japan, and they gave up the occupation. There's a uh, they had a bunch of these B-17s that uh, uh, they were going to try to uh, put on Midway. No way, there was not, not enough room, and uh, we couldn't take care of the, the gas situations. So a lot of them flew from Hawaii, and and uh, they they had uh, drop bombs out there on the 
on the carrier from 40,000 40, feet. And uh, Zeta got no hits, of course, at that, at that uh, altitude. And um, I think uh, some of the B-17s even found some of the, uh, uh, the uh, troop ships that were approaching. They dropped bombs, and I guess they didn't hit any of those either. Now, when, so the, the Army was out there in B-7, B-24s, weren't they? Yeah. B-17s from Pearl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had, had only about three, I think, uh, these are B-24 or B-25, I can't, I think that's 25. Mm -hmm. The 25s are from Midway? Yeah. I think there are about three or three of them. Were they on the same runway? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they, they took off, and uh, uh, I think one of them came back. Carl, can you not? Why? Because uh, the microphone's right there. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, only only about uh, only one of their uh, B-25s came back, and he was pretty well shot up. So the other two were shot down. Mm -hmm. Other B-17s. Yeah. Uh, B-25s. Well, mm -hmm. Now, when, when when you had, so you really didn't know what was coming on, but you knew that that their invasion was put off. The Japanese invasion yeah. of Midway mm -hmm. was put mm -hmm. off, and so mm -hmm. they did not want to occupy it. So they, mm -hmm. you felt that in that regard it was successful. Mm -hmm. And then you were pulled back a few days later mm -hmm. to Pearl. Mm -hmm. uh, how many aircraft did you go with originally at the beginning of the battle and how many did you end up with? I think uh, probably four, probably four SBDs and uh, Probably three uh, SB two U threes. That's what was left out of yeah. how many aircraft originally? Uh, well, we had eleven SB two U threes and uh, uh, sixteen uh, uh, SBDs. So just a few aircraft yeah. left. Yeah. In fact, uh, I was the only SBD SB two U three pilot that uh, that survived all three attacks. The rest of them either went on one or two attacks, but I went on all three of them and survived, which was pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. Very much. So you had a good start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah a good start with you. Yeah. Well, when you got to, to now it's, uh, we're June, right? And now you start getting scuttlebutt about the Coral Sea also, uh, yeah. which was the month before. That's right. And what, what started to paint a picture in your mind of what was going on? What was the uh, well, talk among the pilots? Well, we knew that we had a, a long war going on ahead of us, yeah. Uh, I think uh, morale, was, morale was very high. Uh, everybody, everybody was eager to get, uh, uh, get some revenge for uh, what we'd gone through. Well, you heard that Yorktown had gone down midway. Yeah. Uh, and the Lexington was lost at the Coral mm -hmm. State. Mm -hmm. What was the scuttlebutt among all that? No, we thought it was, uh, <coughs> we're in uh, a very bad situation. And then when, when you started now, you're back at Pearl, it's in June. Mm -hmm. And uh, August was in Guadalcanal, uh, when the Marines hit the Guadalcanal. Mm -hmm. And, and you arrived there in December, right? Or in August? Yeah. August. Well, the Guadalcanal situation, <coughs> uh, I was, uh, uh, was VMS B-231, uh, formed by uh, uh, Mangrum. Uh, he was a major, I think, at that time. Um, we had uh, about 18 pilots and SBDs, <coughs> and uh, I was uh, in that group. And uh, we had flown over to uh, Fort Island, put uh, put the planes aboard the, the ship to take us out there to Guadalcanal. And uh, I'd had a wisdom tooth taken, a full, uh, impact of wisdom tooth taken out about a week or two before this all, before I went over to Fort Island. And uh, <clears throat> I had an infection set in, and my jaw swelled way up. So anyway, uh, but all my gear and stuff went over to uh, Fort Island, and as soon as I got aboard ship, I reported to sick bay, and I had a uh, quite a temperature, and so they took me off the ship, and put so put, put in the hospital, 
and all my gear went on out, and uh, the fellow uh, relieved me, went out Guadalcanal, and he was lost out there, and uh, so I was pretty lucky there. And then so we formed uh, uh, another squadron, uh, and uh, went to uh, uh, Guadalcanal. Uh, took us about 20 days to get there, as I remember, a long time. And uh, we uh, got there in December, and uh, since we got to, uh, I think, New Maya, where we first landed, um, our commanding officer was taken away from us, and the next uh, uh, one in command, or next one senior, uh, well, there was executive officer. Uh, I was uh, we, we, we was a squadron commander. Well, after <clears throat> after we had uh, uh, experienced uh, uh, quite a, a lot of uh, of uh, activity uh, bombing at Guadalcanal, we went to uh, uh, Australia for R and R for a week. And uh, while I was uh, while I went through Noumea, I got a hold of a blue book, and I found out that I was senior to this guy that was who was supposed to be the <laughs> supposed to be the uh, commanding officer. And the funny thing about this uh, this commanding officer, uh, he didn't like to fly. And when we got to Guadalcanal, he went he left the squadron and, and went on to uh, as a forward observer with the uh, Marines, and. Uh, he was still considered a squadron commander. As soon as we found out we were going to Guadalcanal, he came back and went with us. Anyway, I found out I was senior to him, so I uh, went to see the general and told him what the situation was. He said, you're the commanding officer and you've been commanding officers so all, all, all the time you've been here. So the next day, after I found this out, I, I had, I had uh, orders to be transferred back to States. I never got any credit for being commanding officer all this time. <laughs> but anyway, this fellow came back and, uh, 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 to, after I left, and uh, he came back to the squadron, I guess, because he was the old. But uh, anyway, it's kind of a strange situation. That's right. Well, when you were in, in well, now, what kind of activities were you doing? And were you land based or ship based? Oh, uh, we were in uh, Guadalcanal. We were land based at Henderson Field. Uh, we had Marston Matting, which was a uh, a metal uh, uh, landing thing that was uh, uh, fastened together, uh, and uh, it worked out pretty good in the in the rainy weather like that, where uh, otherwise couldn't make, make a landing since takeoffs. But uh, we uh, we uh, the uh, Japanese were still on the island when when we were there in December. And we kept one plane over uh, their area all, all, all at all times, daylight, and uh, uh, looking for uh, people and and any and build up or anything. And uh, we'd made uh, dive bombing runs on them. Uh, we uh, uh, carried out a lot of uh, attacks against Munda, which was an island about. About 80 miles uh, from uh, Guadalcanal, where we were, and they were building an airstrip there, and uh, we kept uh, them. Uh, we bombed them pretty regularly, and then um, the Coast Watchers uh, from uh, New Zealand were on some of these islands, and they were they would uh, <coughs> uh, see these uh, ships coming down the slot. Uh, well, they called the a slot between these different islands that where the ships came down to supply the uh, forces on Guadalcanal, and uh, so we uh, made runs on them. Uh, carry uh, the uh, a lot of more just uh, destroyers, and they put up pretty good uh, uh, inter inter aircraft fire. We didn't we didn't lose anybody uh, in our aircraft fire, but. Uh, uh, we had uh, quite a lot of activity. And so you run this primarily in support of the Marines 
stabilize yes. them there. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when did the Army start arriving in Guam? Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, after uh, I was going to say after uh, oh we had uh, we had two different Bible squad two uh, different Bible squad bomber squadrons uh, out there just about the time I left and uh, I had one experience. Uh, where we went, I was leading a flight uh, of probably probably 20 bombers, dive bombers, uh, against a uh, ship that had been to, we told it was coming to supply uh, the uh, uh, air base. I tell me about Amunda. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, as I was uh, approaching, I noticed that uh, there was a a uh, a Japanese float plane circling this ship looking for uh, for uh, submarines and I should have uh, we had fighter escort one of the few times that we had fighter escort this one we had fighter escort on and I should have uh, called those guys uh, one of them to go down and get rid of this fellow you know uh, but I didn't and uh, so I made my run and uh, uh, dive, dive bombing and as I was coming out there, uh, I saw this plane coming right towards me. He turned towards me, and I had the first time—I had the first time I'd ever had a, uh, a shot at another uh, another airplane, and uh, I, di I didn't do it. And he turned—he turned because he turned, I—I really—I uh, was more interested in in uh, gathering up everybody and 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 uh, and around of them to come back. But anyway, I didn't. I didn't fire him, but I, 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 I could have very easily have shot him down. And uh, anyway, he, he, he turned. He's turned toward me. And then it, when, when I turned towards him, he turned away. And, and. Uh, uh, but I, I probably should have had, uh, uh, told somebody to go down and get, get him, but. I, I didn't. Well, now when you were now, can you show me? Uh, tell me this. Uh, I picture this is a whole of your flight of the uh, oh yes of, of your uh, the gentleman there and uh, that photograph to the one hundred first oh this one oh yes the squadron yeah. yeah this this is a squadron uh, two forty one at Midway and uh, there's only three aircraft there P pardon three of those of uh, those aircraft in that two forty one squadron three aircraft they, that survived yeah. Three, three aircraft. But uh, of this bunch, uh, uh, we lost quite a few of them. And a lot of them, the, the, this is just part of them, because we got uh, another 16 people that, uh, oh, not like 16, but another uh, bunch of uh, pilots that came in. And where are you there? I'm right, uh, right here. Mm -hmm. Right next, there's Fleming, that's me. And Fleming, uh, you and Fleming had known each other for a long time. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd 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 uh, trained together at, back at Midway almost a year before the war. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of those that were in that picture, how many of those uh, got back to Pearl Harbor with you after the Battle of Midway? <sighs> I'd say. Uh, <clears throat> Say probably um, one, two, about eight, I suppose. Can you point out which ones? Which well, let's see. Uh, Fleming was one. Uh, we lost him. Uh, there are two, three, four, five. Probably nine, probably nine of those. So about half of those people didn't make it back. Yeah. Now, when you had uh, you after Midway and, and before you went to Guam Canal, just about that time, mm -hmm. that's when you awarded the uh, uh, Navy Cross. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, we had a picture where we were there I mean, at the same time. That was a that picture that was taken there, I believe. Yeah. And uh, that was. Tell me where that picture was taken. Oh, uh, that was taken. Uh, uh, was that I, I think in Washington. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That was later. Had your Navy I cross on it. That's what I thought it was at yeah. that time. Because you were a captain at that time. Yeah. And that had your Navy cross on it in your wings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't remember where that was taken. It looks like it's a, it's a military, uh, uh, there's a military man here. So I thought it might have been yeah. Nimitz's office or something. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the, the, other, the other picture I had with Nimitz, uh, pan, uh, pan, uh, Putting a medal on me, uh, uh, well, it wasn't. We have a smaller one. I don't think I had. Uh, uh, I didn't have my uniform like this. I was just in shirts, I think. Mm-hmm. That's right. Let me yeah. get that picture. I think I have it here in the kitchen, yeah. and uh, I can share that because that way you can share me that one. See, this uh, this is my uh, this is Admiral Nimitz here, and his pinning uh, the Navy cross on me here, and. Uh, this is the same picture of the squadron here, that, uh, and it mentions uh, those that uh, participated were uh, given the Navy Cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, this this must have been taken after mm -hmm. uh, it, after I'd gotten the cross for. Uh, uh, could you read the citation? I have the citations right there on the Navy Cross. Uh huh. This one, yeah. This is one now. Uh, yeah. Captain William Williamson. Yeah, that would kind of describe it. If you could read the, the citation okay. itself. Uh, for extraordinary heroism in the line of his profession as a pilot of Marine Scout Bombing Squadron, this should have been 241, uh, during the operation of the U.S. Naval and Marine Forces at uh, Midway. Uh, against uh, invading Japanese fleet on June 4th and 5th, 1942, and in the face of withering fire from enemy fighters and anti-aircraft batteries, he pressured home his attack. On June 4th, uh, he participated in a search of an attack uh, mission against an enemy carrier and brought uh, his plane back to its base under adver extremely adverse weather and conditions. Uh, on June 5th, uh, 1943, after less than four hours sleep, he pr participated in the attack through Navy heavy anti-aircraft fire on a enemy battleship uh, in which he was damaged, which was damaged seriously. That wasn't a battleship, that was a heavy cruiser. <laughs> uh, uh, his uh, courage and uh, de devotion to duty were uh, in keeping with the highest tradition of the Naval Service, uh, signed Admiral Nimitz. That's great. And that was uh, on the letterhead? What does it say on the letterhead? Pardon? What does it say on the letterhead there? Uh, United States uh, Pacific Fleet, flagship of the Commander-in-Chief. Mm -hmm. Now, there was one other, you had the... Uh, uh, DFC? The DFC, the Series Flying Class there. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's right. Okay. Oh, I think no, it's in the left. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Okay. This is uh, this a uh, flying cross, which. Uh, <coughs> by uh, Major General Mitchell, the U.S. Marine Corps. Um, United States Marine Corps Headquarters Aircraft Fleet Marine Force. Uh, in the name of the President of the United States Commanding uh, General Aircraft Fleet Marine Force Pacific takes pleasure in presenting the distinguished flying cross to Le Major Leon M. Williamson, United States Marine Corps Reserve. Uh, for extraordinary achievement while participating in an aerial flight in the Solomon Islands area from June, from 25th of January, 43, actually it's February, 
uh, it, was, it was December. <laughs> uh, it was December. They got the wrong date. Uh, to, uh, to February. Actually, it was uh, that's the wrong date, too. It was uh, March. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it says uh, based on 20, uh, 20th flight in the combat area where enemy aircraft fire and expect to be effective are uh, where uh, enemy aircraft patrols usually occurred. And then, uh, then I got uh, a uh, three uh, different air medals, and uh, you get an air medal for each five flights you uh, did against the uh, uh, Japanese fleet. Oh, Japanese in, in combat, yeah, combat. Yeah, and then the, uh, the larger one is uh, was interesting when you were. I think that's kind of an interesting one. Oh. We'll get into it a little later, but I think that's that's very important when you uh, were promoted to colonel. Oh. And, uh, yes, that was. Uh, what kind of day? On the 15th day of October, 1959, I was promoted to uh, a rank of colonel. In the reserve. Mm -hmm. I was a reserve officer and uh, stayed in the reserves and called back in Korea after uh, uh, So, yeah, that's, that's it. Now, when you got back after Midway <coughs> and after Guadalcanal, mm -hmm. And, and you were uh, you were still uh, Ralph Powell wasn't secured until around February or March of '43. No. Uh, and you said you got some orders to go back to the states. And what did they tell you in those orders? Well, uh, I had to report back to San Diego and for assignment. And uh, how did you feel when you got those orders? Well, that's pretty pretty nice. And uh, uh, there's a there was a. Two other pilots that were originally out of EVA, same time I was, that had arrived there just before uh, I got orders to come back. And they also got orders because we'd been overseas over two years. Yeah. And uh, so we came back by, uh, I think, uh, President Coolidge. I was a, uh, a uh, regular uh, tourist uh, uh, ship. And uh, we were. Uh, had menus just like we're tourists, and uh, we had about 20 days, I guess, uh, coming back. And when I reported, they gave me uh, uh, a week or two uh, that I wouldn't uh, wouldn't have to uh, report, and I could report back by telephone. And so, at that time, I was uh, looked up Patty, and uh, we dated quite a bit, and uh, uh, got married in May, on May 3rd. 1943. Out of San Diego? Yeah. Out of San Diego. Oh, I, no, we were married uh, right here in Los Angeles at the Wee Kirk of the Hiller. Uh -huh. and, well, tell me, uh, how did you get to L.A. from San Diego? Uh, I think by train. And uh, did you particularly chose that location? Or Pardon? You probably chose that uh, Wee Kirk? Well, was, well Patty there. was, uh, my wife was from the Los Angeles area. And uh, so she had friends and relatives here. I had just one one relative, an aunt, and uh, who represent, represent my family. So in the war, the people just didn't travel, you know. And so uh, you got married in May, you said, of fifth, uh, May 3rd, of, of 19, May 3rd of 43. 43 huh? So you just, just celebrated your what? We just uh, celebrated our 59th uh, anniversary, and we're looking forward to the 60th coming up next year. That's great. <laughs> So now you were now you were in San Diego. You're stateside. You've had a couple of years overseas, mm -hmm. uh, and you're a captain at that point. Mm -hmm. And what what happened to the duration of the war for you? Well, uh, I uh, was sent back to uh, North Carolina, and I was assigned as a, a commanding officer of another SBD squadron. And we transferred uh, by train to San Diego. And was sent back to Midway Island <laughs> for for almost a year, and then we uh, we were transferred back to uh, to uh, Eva, and uh, I had a, a, a dive bombing squadron there, and the uh, well, same dive bombing squadron. Uh, uh, and while we were there, uh, an atom bomb was dropped, and and. Uh, the, um, the Japanese surrendered shortly yeah. after. What, what would you take?
Children's Home in Fullerton. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just finishing up and discussing about uh, now that you're commanding officer of your own uh, SPD squadrons, mm -hmm. uh, dive bomber squadrons in North Carolina and then San Diego, now back in mm -hmm. Midway mm -hmm. for another year, mm -hmm. and, and then uh, uh, back to Pearl at Eva. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the same squadron? Yes, yeah, same was squadron. Squad, mm -hmm. What was the squadron number mm -hmm. at that time? That was uh, uh, Squadron 233. 233. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you had all SBD mm -hmm. aircraft. How many SPD aircraft were the full squadron? 18. 18. Mm -hmm. So you had 18 uh, plus all the ground crew, all those mm -hmm. people were under your, uh, your command. Yep. Uh, at, at, I think we had about 300 people, as I remember, in our whole squadron. Everybody supports everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, when you had uh, uh, first gone into training, taking over the squadrons, mm -hmm. uh, the question I asked uh, while, while we were replacing the, mm -hmm. the tape was, uh, how did you train your men differently than you were trained? Well, I think we did more uh, dive bombing practice, a lot of dive bombing practice. Um, I trained them to uh, form up immediately after uh, making their uh, attack, uh, whether it was dive bombing, uh, 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 imitation bombs, or uh, or uh, regular bombs, but um, that was that's what what I mostly did, and uh, I think uh, I uh, we had a, a more of a more of a uh, almost like a fraternity. Uh, we had we were together almost two years, and uh, oh. Or, they, uh, they were very, very, very uh, had a lot of very close friends. And, uh, and so when they, you were in Eva now, you know, last uh, duty, that last mm -hmm. year, in 45? Uh, we flew, uh, then we got tra transferred to uh, F4Us, fighters, which was a big, Tell me big big step. Tell me during the F4U. Yeah, uh, that's uh, the gull wing uh, uh, fighter. And, uh, it was a very good airplane. Hey, tell me about it, the horsepower, the climbing rate. Think, tell me about the differences. Well, uh, it has a, had a, I don't, I can't remember the horsepower in the thing, but uh, had a, a good climbing rate, and uh, we could get up to uh, around 40,000 feet, of course, with the oxygen, and uh, it was, uh, could be a dangerous aircraft to fly if you, uh, uh, try to exceed uh, the speed and and, uh, and, and, ma and ma different maneuvers and things. Uh, How would you compare that kind of a fighter with the with what you saw early in the war with the zeros? Well, I wish we'd had that in there <laughs> at a, at a, because they, it was uh, uh, it was uh, actually you could. We, we didn't dive bomb those things either, uh, but uh, not, we weren't quite as steep in our dives. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, but if, uh, I'll wait for the phone. Wait till it picks it up. For you, as a fighter, mm -hmm. uh, how would you compare that aircraft with a Zero? It was um, a competitive. But they still, uh, uh, in talking with other uh, pilots that had uh, scored a lot of hits uh, with the, uh, with the, against the Zeros, uh, they still wanted to have a, uh, the uh, L2 advantage, make their run, and, um, and then get the heck out of there. And uh, not to, not to dogfight them. Mm -hmm. Because I think they were more maneuverable. Uh, and uh, I think that they had about the same speed. Possibly, probably, I thought, no, the F4U had better, more speed, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was a really, a, uh, it was a quite a good aircraft. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were, you were in Pearl Harbor when the, when the uh, atom bomb was dropped in Hiroshima mm -hmm. and Nagasaki, mm -hmm. and uh, the war was over, mm -hmm. what, did, what did you, uh, 
How did the word get to you? How did you guys react to it? Uh, it was pretty unbelievable. Uh, the fact that, uh, of course, we didn't know anything about it. Nobody knew anything about the, the atomic bomb. But, uh, that, uh, but when that happened, we, we knew that the, that, that was the end, pretty much the end of the war. And how, how did how was the reaction? I mean, did people celebrate? They have a oh yes, yeah. oh yeah, we celebrated. And now you've been now you're a married man, almost yep. two years now, uh -huh. and your wife was with you at Pearl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so did you have any children at that time? Pardon? Did you have any children at that time? Uh, yes, we had uh, one child. Mm -hmm. uh, born uh, just before I went to Midway for the second time. My wife uh, went home to have the baby and uh, to, to California, Los Angeles, and because we were going to be going any any day, and uh, so that didn't happen. <laughs> we went we went to Puerto Rico f uh, for for uh, some training, and uh, uh, while we were there, uh, my wife decided that she was going to come back. And she she came back uh, with my, my executive officer's wife, and they drove all the way across the country. Had all had a terrible terrible time, and they had they more than gotten back, and uh, uh, we got orders to go. So I had uh, they, when the train left uh, 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 Cherry Point, North Carolina, it went right by the little house that we had rented. And there was my wife out there waving goodbye with a baby. And she had to get all the way back to, uh, to California by herself. Uh, it was pretty, pretty rough, pretty rough. Yeah. To see your family, you didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Huh? Not much to say goodbye either. No. Yeah. So anyway, we, we, uh, we, uh, we traveled across the, uh, the whole squadron on a train to San Diego, and I went through that before. And, uh, all our gear was taken away from us. We'd accumulate. I had all this experience of uh, what to take, like mosquito netting, extra mosquito netting, and, and uh, things to make ice cream and this, all this stuff. And uh, uh, anyway, we got all put in a pile and taken away from us. We got to San Diego. <laughs> and then we were shipped out to, to uh, Midway again. Now, Midway had changed quite a bit since the last time. Yeah, we it was. Uh, uh, we had uh, handball courts and uh, tennis courts, and uh, 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 that's about it, I guess. And no uh, a lot of swimming and uh, snorkeling and things. So there's no dependent housing. No, no. So we lived there. But you had to R and R to go back to Pearl. No, we didn't go on R and R. Didn't. No, so you had we're there. You were we're there. there. Yeah. Not your family. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so just the, and that's not much to do on the uh, Midway. No. Not much to do, uh, except to train, and uh, of course we, we enjoyed the uh, snorkeling out there, and swimming, and the uh, lagoon. And now, when you, uh, the war was over in, in uh, late summer of '45, mm -hmm. and, and uh, what happened after the war? What happened? You were still in Hawaii. You were commanding yeah. officer. So okay. What happened at that point? Uh, I uh, was well, shipped back to. Uh, North Carolina, and um, I was uh, G4. I was in charge of logistics of a, of a group, and um, then uh, I got out. I went back to uh, uh, to uh, Los Angeles and uh, decided that I want to go back to college and take advantage of the uh, GI Bill of Rights. So I enrolled at uh, Berkeley and uh, as a landscape architect uh, training, and uh, went another two years to college, and got uh, another degree, another uh, MS, uh, master, another, another uh, uh, degree in, uh, in uh, landscape architecture. Um, and uh, I stayed in reserves, and I uh, was commanding officer of a squadron at. Uh, Alameda, uh, where we trained, and uh, and then I transferred down to uh, 
after I got graduated, I, I uh, got a job with the county of the uh, Parks Department and uh, doing uh, landscaping for uh, golf courses and, uh, and uh, public buildings. And uh, I still uh, stayed in reserves and uh, had a squadron out to Los Alamitos uh, in the fighter squadron. I flew S4, F4Us, and then uh, after 21 years, I retired. And you were, uh, now, in, in between that was uh, Korea. Yep. Uh, what happened when the Korean War broke out? The Chinese well, came in south. They, they, uh, we had, every year we used to uh, fly back to uh, Terry Point, North Carolina for uh, 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 maneuvers for about a week. The mic? Oh. <laughs> uh, we'd fly back, back to, uh, uh, we'd take, take our planes back to, uh, to uh, uh, Cherry Point, North Carolina, for, for uh, maneuvers. You'd fly cross and country? While, yeah. And while, while we were there, uh, the, the commandant uh, said that, uh, came down, and there was, this Korean thing was just getting going. And he said, we don't expect to call you uh, uh, men until uh, December, and this was about like uh, August. And uh, when we came back, uh, I went to work the next day, and um, I got a Patty. My wife got a telegram telling me to report for active duty uh, next day, and uh, so I had to leave my squadron, which I uh, leave my my job which was pretty easy to do with a, with a working for the county. And I uh, knew, knew that uh, my job would be there when I got through. And uh, so uh, when we reported back out at uh, uh, Los Alamitos. And uh, that time uh, they decided uh, who was going to be going right to Korea, which uh, was almost right away, and uh, fortunately I didn't make that. And uh, so I went uh, later, and I was over there probably eight months, I guess. And, and I was a logistics officer of a of a group. Of an air group. Mm -hmm. uh, which air group was that? Uh, I can't remember what mag it was. Uh, I can't remember. Now how many squadrons in that air group? Oh, uh, they had, um, I think they, uh, out there they had just one uh, fighter squadron. Mm -hmm. That's all. And so they had the whole air group with one squadron, mm -hmm. one fighter squadron. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, uh, and where were you stationed in, in Korea? Uh, first at Busan uh, for a short time. And then I moved up to, uh, I think it was K, K-18, which was up north. And um, then um, they had F4, uh, F4Us at that time. Mm -hmm. So all, all flying mm -hmm. Corsairs mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, what kind of, what kind of uh, uh, assignment did your squad uh, have? Uh, they had uh, uh, attacks on railroads and uh, uh, oh, I guess anything, I guess. Uh, there's quite a few, quite a few, uh, quite a few uh, attacks. And they were uh, supportive Marines, uh, yeah. Army, and et cetera? Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, I think we're more support, supportive of Marines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And throughout, and yeah. was, it, was any, any of your group involved in the Chosan area? Wasn't that? I think that was uh, after I left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, your your air group was there for about eight or nine months mm -hmm. until the major buildup when mm -hmm. you're moving back north because mm -hmm. that had kind of seesawed. Yeah. Well, they, they, in fact, they thought that uh, there was going to be a uh, armistice or uh, that be an agreement uh, about the last two three months we were there back and forth, you know. And, and but that was just before the Chinese got involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the major pushback. We yeah. didn't get called back again after that. No. 
Okay, and then mm -hmm. when you're still in the reserves, now it's 51, 52, and you and you were with, uh, and you came back to LA, mm -hmm. and uh, Los Alamitos. And what was your assignment here at Los Al? Um, you were promoted lieutenant colonel in there, weren't you? Uh, yes, and um, I still had the squadron, had a squadron out of Los Alamitos, and um, then. Uh, and I retired, and uh, that was it. Mm. What, what year did you retire? I think it was about 19, uh, from 1960. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. retired at that point, and, and, uh, and you had just been promoted a few years before to, to full colonel. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and now, along the way, you had another child. Mm -hmm. uh, what well, was your second child born? Uh, second, second child was born uh, <coughs> uh, after I got back from Korea. Mm -hmm. We had a uh, difference of ten years between the two ch uh, two girls, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, that was it. And what, what did the girls do? What the girls do? Well, one of them, uh, she has her own business uh, in uh, preschool. She formed it at her home and. Uh, and they uh, acquired a, a large building, and uh, they send their preschool program all over, all over uh, Hawaii and, and uh, United States and uh, Canada, and uh, they uh, supply the materials and everything that they can do this home, uh, home school stuff. Uh -huh. And uh, the other one uh, married to a painting a painter. And she uh, works as a uh, checker in, uh, in uh, one of the markets. Oh, that's great. And, so and they're all local? Yeah. And you have any grand uh, uh -huh. grandchildren? Yeah. We have, uh, we have uh, two, uh, two grandchildren from the, my, uh, the younger daughter, and I have two uh, grandchildren from the, uh, from the older daughter. Yeah, any great grandchildren? And uh, they have, uh, and one of, the, one of the grandchildren is uh, Married and they just recently had twins, and so they have three. So we have three grandchildren, great, great grandchildren, grandchildren. great grandchildren. Yeah. Amazing. Now along the way, along the way, you you uh, uh, got in the Christmas tree business. Yeah. Tell me about the Christmas well, tree business. Well, I uh, <clears throat> a fellow uh, when I was living in Santa Ana, he had a Christmas tree lot, and. Uh, we decided to go together and buy some property out here in Atwood and set up another one. Now, where is Atwood geographically? Uh, out by Placentia, which is just about, uh, about four miles uh, from here. And so we bought this property, and uh, we were uh, planting uh, these uh, Christmas trees, uh, which were Monterey pine. Uh, and one of the first ones in, in Orange County, in fact, I guess any place in the, in the, in the, with these Monterey pines. Anyway, we uh, bought this property, and uh, and uh, uh, they had water uh, water rights from a well, and uh, we uh, planted these things about uh, six feet apart, and uh, uh, we sold just about all every year. Uh, but we could we could uh, have a tree for sale in two years, and uh, so. We just had this thing going. We had it for about uh, probably at least ten years, and uh, uh, then we sold the property. And my wife was getting tired of working out there, and especially I, I had had a, a job, and I, my work was usually just out there on weekends. So uh, uh, most of my weekends were either spent on on the reserve. <laughs> thing or, or, or uh, out at the field. <laughs> but it was kind of nice to, uh, uh, to be out, get out there and have, not have to worry about personnel or anything, you know, just those trees, you know, prune them and take care of them. Well, how did the Christmas tree, uh, tree lots, I mean, you know, people buy a Christmas tree that's mm -hmm. cut from someplace, and how did the Christmas tree lot work? In order to cut it down and take it home, and how long was two years more to grow another tree out the same uh, Well, uh, what I did, uh, well, after we cut it down, uh, the uh, would be uh, growth would come up along the side, and then I'd plant another uh, 
just a seedling next to it. And if that thing uh, grew faster from the tree that was cut down, I'd train that into it, and I would uh, I would move the other one or take the other one out. But um, it was quite profitable. We saw. We were, were originally selling for about a dollar a foot, and we saw we'd sell a seven-foot tree for seven dollars. <laughs> but it wasn't long before their their uh, prices went up considerably, and uh, we got out. Uh, we got out uh, because of the fact that uh, my wife didn't want to do this anymore. Uh, uh, to, uh, she didn't do any of the physical work, but. Uh, be out there selling while I was I was in, in out working in, in Los Angeles and and we had a lot of people stealing trees and uh, it was discouraging. Yeah. Oh. You know, that was the right time then. Yeah. Now you were with the county as as a, as a landscape architect, mm -hmm. uh, County of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And uh, when did you retire from the county? Uh, <clears throat> Nineteen. Uh, Probably 1960, uh, yeah, I think I was 59 years old. So when I was born in 1917. So that's it. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was uh, probably at least uh, for, for pretty close to 40 years ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, and you had all, and what was your job at uh, still at Lansky Park? Uh, yes, um, actually we got transferred f to the facilities department, and uh, they had architects and uh, engineers and uh, landscape architects, and uh, I was in charge of the department, and uh, we had about the um, oh, landscape architecture department, and we had about um, um, eight landscape architects working, mm -hmm. and uh, as I said, we we. Uh, Designed golf courses and uh, for the county and uh, uh, public buildings and that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Now that you've retired, now uh, you've been very busy. But I wanted to before we go into the, your retirement, I'd like you if you could uh, describe these and oh, maybe okay. point them out for me. You might. So I mean, many people have never right. never seen uh, okay. what uh, you tell people their resume is. Okay, <laughs> right. You go. So if you could. Uh, Listen. This is the gold wings, of course, we wore as a naval uh, pilot. Now, tell you the difference between crewmen and, and pilots. Yeah, and this is um, looks a sign for, signature for a colonel who we wore on our, our, our cap and on our collars. And this is the Navy Cross up here uh, from the Battle of Midway. And this, this is a Distinguished Service Cross here from uh, our the uh, activity at uh, Guadalcanal, and this is uh, the, the uh, air medal with two gold stars, which is, means three air medals, and you got an air medal for five, five attacks against enemy aircraft and uh, enemy. And then this is uh, Pearl Harbor uh, medal. This is Pacific uh, medal. Um, I forgot what that is. <laughs> uh, uh, this is Korea. These are Korea things here. United Nations, yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know what the others are there. No. I should know those. So then, uh, the, you show me the medals on these. Oh, okay. And this, these are the medals. There's the Navy Cross. Uh, here's a Distinguished uh, Flying Cross. The, the Air Medal. Uh, this is a medal I got um, for saving somebody's life when I was a Boy Scout. Uh, uh, somebody got in the deep water and I dived in and pulled him out and gave him artificial respiration. And, and uh, uh, let's see, I think that's a president. Was it a president unit citation or not? I don't know. You have to turn them over to read the back part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I got anything about it. I got to do that. <laughs> and uh, uh, show the wings there. And the wings are from a uniform? Uh, pardon? Oh, yeah. This is uh, 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 the wings that we wear on our, our green uniform. 
And this is one we pinned on our uh, white uniform and on our khaki uniform. Uh, I've forgotten what these other medals are. I think the blue one is the Korean United Nations one. It I think is? It's the United Nations. Oh. Oh. I don't know. And uh, the, the new medal is now the Korean Defense Medal. That uh, in a few more weeks uh, in July, we're having a special ceremony down at Patriotic Hall uh, for Korean War vets. Oh. And uh, the Consul General will be there to present the Korean Defense Medal. Hmm. Uh, to all those who served, because it was never awarded. The time you got those, it had not been awarded because it was given by the Korean government and couldn't oh. wear them. Oh. And so now they're being uh, being presented by the Consul General. So I'll make sure that you get an invitation for that. Oh, thank uh, you. That'll be a very special occasion. You know, one of the things I usually end up, uh, kind of when we have a chance to summarize all this, that everybody has peaks and valleys in their lives. Has what? Everybody peaks and valleys, peaks yeah. Peaks and valleys, you know? And, and so I uh, ask, what are some of those... Uh, valleys that you had, and what are some of the peaks that you had? Well, of course, when I got married and uh, had my children, those were, those were peaks. Uh, I think surviving Midway was a peak. Uh, our valleys. I don't think I had too many. <laughs> That's it. That's uh, I've always had enough uh, to take care of what we want, what, what we, how we live, and uh, do things I want to do. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, one of the peaks was uh, my uh, uh, promotion to uh, colonel. Uh, I think I told you about the uh, the speed of uh, my promotions. That when we were out of the midway, I, I was a second lieutenant, uh, and, and I was promoted to a first lieutenant when I soldered my my gold uh, second lieutenant things. And then uh, about a week or so later, we got, I got promoted to captain, and I soldered two of those together. So uh, anyway, there was of course no there was no way of of <laughs> Have, having a, a buying any of that out there, and so that's what that's what we did. My, my friends were the same situation. Uh, and so so we, if we were captured, we'd been captured as captains instead of <laughs> second lieutenant, <laughs> which uh, I, would, I sure would have made much difference. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was uh, uh, that was quite an unsettling time. Yeah. So to survive that would have been quite a yeah. quite you know. So those are, that's a real peak. Now, one of the, you know, when we when we uh, uh, put this together, what we'll try is make sure you have copies of all this. But on behalf of the military museum, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here with you today, Colonel, and particularly uh, our military history educational project and uh, our oral history efforts. Uh, to uh, thank you for your hospitality and thank opportunity you. to visit with you and take all this time. I, I, I enjoyed <laughs> it, and I, I I appreciate you spending your time doing it. Well, we, we feel that it's very valuable. We can relate that. If you were if you were going to, uh, you know, have something that was sage, you know, you know, you the sage is the person on the hill. You know, you see those cartoons. Mm -hmm. and everybody comes up to the guru and asks them some great answer. And and uh, uh, from your life experience, what is it that you you feel that that uh, this generation, new kids, mm -hmm. their great grandchildren, are brand new ones, and uh, how might your experience be able to help them? Well, I think hard work. Don't be afraid of hard work. Uh, find something that you're interested in that you uh, enjoy doing. Uh, there's nothing worse than uh, uh, getting an occupation that uh, it's a drudgery. You have to go to work. Uh, my, my only drudgery that I had, uh, uh, I, I really enjoyed my work. I, I didn't make a lot of money at it, but I enjoyed doing it. Was uh, making plans of uh, uh, and, cre and creating. Uh, I think if you can get any, do anything uh, in the creative uh, uh, mind, uh, you'll be much happier. Uh, important. It's very important to 
to uh, choose an occupation as something you like doing. And that's what you would pass on to your great-grandchildren? That's right. Yeah. And I think honesty is a, a certainly a, 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 a attribute you shouldn't have. Um, and um, just uh, just get in there and, and, and work and uh, uh, make a living for yourself and do the things you enjoy doing, I think. That's, that's, good. Yeah. that's right. Well, we're officially, we're officially ended, and it's been very nice. I'm glad it wasn't too painful. No, no. <laughs> I, enjoy, I enjoyed it. <laughs> well, we'll try I'll do. put this stuff up later. That's <laughs> what I'll try and do. Uh, uh, would, can, I, can I uh, put some soup on for you?
Here, let me put this other one here. Yeah, it'll stay. And we'll have, uh, we can shoot them that way. We'll have them on the front. And then, uh, one of the yeah, of course, I'll, uh, I'll shoot the, I'll, I'll have the clip for this one. I have some others, but I think it's best to have it this way. Because that will get a good, uh, a better picture by itself that way. Because I have, I think, a bad picture similar one. But this, I think, is better. Did you end up being in the same squadron? Oh, yeah. Same squadron. I'll be darned. That's, that's going to be unusual. Um, you okay? Yeah, it's come across the light. Okay. I don't know if you're done yet. Uh, Colonel, you might want to take a look at this for the heck of it. I want to take a look and see how the camera works. Oh. Well, you might show him how what, what you're saying to there. You might take a look at the, his viewer up there. See, he's view, viewing it horizontally. He's viewing it through the lens. That's his retirement. <laughs> Once it got back, they fixed it up, and uh, it flew it out of uh, Chicago. Uh, Saint 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 yeah. Somebody ditched it in the in Lake Michigan and it out of the qualifying port out of got a converted ship and made into a carrier for practice period. Mm -hmm. They recovered it. They fixed uh referred um, when those um, two uh, Japanese uh, ships collided when trying to both yeah. avoid that submarine. Mm -hmm. Now I read about that collision, but I didn't know why. I talked to, I was down at Memorial Day Services <coughs> down at Seal Beach mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, U.S. Uh, Submarine Association, mm -hmm. uh, Submarine Vets World War II, and, uh, and I talked to a guy who was uh, on the U.S. sub. He says he was the only one that got up for the to oh. torpedoes in time before they were traveling at higher speeds. He out, out raced them from the direction they were going. Mm -hmm. So they didn't get a shot at him. Uh, but he did see him through the, through the, through the uh, periscope, yeah. <laughs> And I said, do you ever get any photographs? He says, no, nah, I wish we did. <laughs> oh, well, okay. So uh, I, I'm sure that was a, probably the, the 
the, the uh, submarine that uh, <coughs> I tried to land. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to get his na the name of the submarine. I didn't write it down. I should have. Uh, you know, so many people around that I should have. You know, people scatter, and then it's real impossible to find them again. That's the reason for those. Yeah, that's the nicest, nicest set. We'll have that. Uh, did, I don't think we got these others up here. Did you get that one, Robert? You get that all these? Yeah. Okay. Uh, did Did you get this one? Yeah. Oh, the front? No, the front cover. No. Okay, I want to get the front cover. <coughs> yeah, that has the the same aircraft that that that's in the uh, inside in the photograph. Mm -hmm. But this one's taking off, so I think that would be an interesting shot. Because mm -hmm. this shows the the, the uh, flight line. <laughs> you know, when we, when we, I'm going to leave these two here so that we can, we can describe that and then I'll read the citation also. Okay. Air metal, two gold stars. That's air metal? Mm -hmm. oh, air metal and two gold stars. Oh, okay. Doesn't say how many flights, does it? Seem to find cross and the admiral was two gold star. <laughs> I guess it doesn't tell how many flights, huh? What says there? Oh, here, here, here it is. Twenty fifth flight. Company. That's for the DFC. Mm -hmm. And that's air metal. When I set that up, we can we can then bring have you come over with these and we can then scan them. Two thirty three. three air metals. That's for your fifth flight. Mm -hmm. That's for your tenth flight. That's for your fifteenth flight. Oh, okay. So you have all five. Oh, it is five, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so you were, your memory served you correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to, uh, if you start framing all these, you're going to have the walls full of them. <laughs> We have to do another room addition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you got it? Oh. That goes on here, huh? Let's see if it goes in the twists or how. Oh, so when we do that, then it will be part of the record on the. Uh, so if a person were. We're doing some history, research. They'd be able to find out well, how many flights. Well, Colonel Williamson had that, and be able mm -hmm. to go back and dig out the research and, and hmm. what we qualified for and when it was. And so that would be um, a record. You know, oftentimes they're not kept. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? and everybody just knew knew, uh, but it it was oftentimes changed, and things uh, you know uh, over the years. Even the uh, Purple Heart changed. Used to be under hostile fire and combat. 
Mm -hmm. Well, after a while, if you were just wounded by the enemy, mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't have to be actually in combat. So uh, those people who were uh, POWs who were, who were uh, uh, not wounded, but were assaulted and beat up, were given Purple Hearts. There was a big stink about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's um, changes. Whether it's good or bad, it's changes. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, Colonel Williamson, for allowing us to uh, do your uh, oral history uh, today. And today is the 20, uh, the 30th of May of 2002. It's about, um, what time is it now? Well, about 10 minutes to 12, 11.50. Uh, it's Thursday uh, morning. And we're at the home of uh, Colonel Leon.
in home in Poetry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just finishing up and discussing about uh, now that you're commanding officer of your own uh, SBD squadron, mm -hmm. uh, dive bomber squadrons in North Carolina and then San Diego, now back in mm -hmm. Midway mm -hmm. for another year, mm -hmm. and, and then uh, uh, back to Pearl at Evo. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the same squadron? Yes, yeah, same what squadron. Was squad mm -hmm. What was the squadron number mm -hmm. at that time? That was uh, uh, Squadron 233. 233. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then you had all SVD mm -hmm. aircraft. How many SBD aircraft were the full squadron? 18. 18. Mm -hmm. So you had 18 uh, plus all the ground crew, all the mm -hmm. people were under your, uh, your command. Yep. Uh, I think we had about 300 people, as I remember, in the whole squadron. Yeah, everybody supports everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, when you had uh, uh, first gone into training, taking over the squadrons, mm -hmm. uh, the question I asked uh, long, uh, the, while we were replacing the, mm -hmm. the tape was, uh, how did you train your men differently than you were trained? Well, I think we uh, did more uh, dive bombing practice, a lot of dive bombing practice. Um, I trained them to uh, form up immediately after uh, making their uh, attack, uh, whether it was dive bombing uh, 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 imitation bombs or uh, or uh, regular bombs, but um, that was my, that's what what I mostly did, and uh, I think uh, I uh, we had a, a more of a more of a uh, almost like a fraternity. Uh, we had been, we were together almost two years. Very, very, very. Uh, had a lot of very close friends. And, uh, so when you were in Eva now, in the last uh, duty that last mm -hmm. year, in '45. Uh, so we flew. Uh, then we got uh, transferred to uh, F4Us fighters, which was a big, Probably big step. Probably different than F4U. Yeah, uh, that's uh, the gull wing uh, uh, fighter. It uh, was a very good airplane. Tell me about it, the horsepower, the climbing rate, thing. tell me about the differences. Well, uh, it had a, had a, I don't know, I can't remember the horsepower in the thing, but it uh, had a, a good climbing rate, and uh, we could get up to uh, around 40,000 feet, of course, with oxygen, and uh, it was, a, could be a dangerous aircraft to fly up to, uh, to exceed uh, the speed and, and, uh, and, and, ma and ma different maneuvers and things. So How would you compare that kind of a fighter with, the, with what you saw early in the war with the Zero? Well, I wish we'd had that when they were <laughs> at a, at a, because they were, it was, a, uh, it was a, actually, you could, we, we didn't dive bomb those things either, uh, but uh, they're not, we weren't quite as steep in our dives. It was uh, competitive, but they still, uh, uh, in talking with other uh, pilots, have, have uh, scored a lot of hits uh, with the uh, with the, against the zeros. Uh, they still wanted to have a, uh, a uh, L two advantage, make their run, and um, and then get the heck out of there, and uh, not to not to dogfight them. Because I think they were more maneuverable, uh, and uh, I think the, they had about the same speed. Probably, probably, I thought, no, the F4U had better, more speed, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're really, a, uh, and they're quite a good aircraft. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were you were in Pearl Harbor when the when the uh, atom bomb was dropped in Hiroshima mm -hmm. and Nagasaki, mm -hmm. and uh, the war was over. Mm -hmm. What did, what did you? Uh, 
How did the word get to you? How did you guys react to it? Uh, it was pretty unbelievable. Uh, the fact that, uh, of course, we didn't know anything about it. Nobody knew anything about the, the atomic bomb. But, uh, but, uh, but when that happened, we, we knew that the, that, that was the end, pretty much the end of the war. How, how did how was the reaction? I mean, did people celebrate? They have a oh, yes. oh yeah, oh yeah, we celebrated. Uh, now you've been now you're a married man, almost yep. two years now, uh -huh. and your wife was with you at Pearl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so did you have any children at that time? Pardon? Did you have any children at that time? Uh, yes, we had uh, one child. Mm -hmm. uh, born uh, just before I, w I went to uh, Midway for the second time. My wife uh, went home to have the baby and uh, to, to California, Los Angeles, and because we were going to be going any any day, and uh, so that didn't happen. <laughs> we went we went to Puerto Rico uh, for for uh, some training, and uh, uh, while we were there. Uh, my wife decided that she was going to come back. And she she came back uh, with uh, my executive officer's wife, and they drove all the way across the country. Had all had a terrible terrible time, and they had any more gotten back, and uh, uh, we got orders to go. So I had uh, they, when the train left uh, 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 Cherry Point, North Carolina, it went right by the ho little house that we had rented, and there was my wife out there waving goodbye with a baby and she had to get all the way back to uh, to California by herself. Uh, it was pretty pretty rough. Pretty rough. Yeah. So your family, you didn't get a chance to say goodbye? No. Huh? Not much to say goodbye either? No. Uh, so anyway, we, we, uh, we, we traveled across the, uh, the whole squadron on a train to San Diego and I went through that before. All our gear was taken away from us. We did Cuba. I had all this experience of uh, what to take, like mosquito netting, extra mosquito netting, and and uh, things to make ice cream and this, all this stuff. And uh, uh, anyway, all, we got they're all put in a pile and taken away from us. We got to San Diego, <laughs> and then we were shipped out to to uh, Midway again. Now Midway has changed quite a bit from the last time. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, we had uh, handball courts and uh, tennis courts, and uh, 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 that's about it, I guess. There's and no uh, a lot there. of swimming and uh, snorkeling and things. So there's no dependent housing. No, no. So we lived there. You had to R and R to go back to Pearl. No, we didn't go on R and R. We didn't. No, so you had a whole we were there. We were there. Yeah. Lots of family. Yeah. Okay. So what happened? So we just go, and that's not much to do on the Midway. No. Not much to do, except to train, and uh, of course we, we enjoyed that uh, snorkeling out there, and swimming, and uh, lagoon. And now, when you, the war was over in, in uh, late summer of '45, mm -hmm. and, and then what happened after the war? What happened? You were still in Hawaii, you were commanding yeah. officer. Okay. What happened at that point? Uh, I uh, was shipped back to. Uh, North Carolina, and uh, I was uh, G4. I was in charge of logistics of a, of a group, and uh, then uh, I got out. I went back to uh, uh, to uh, Los Angeles and uh, decided that I want to go back to college and take advantage of the uh, GI Bill of Rights. So I enrolled at uh, Berkeley and uh, as a landscape architect uh, training, and uh, went another two years to college, and got uh, another degree, another uh, MS, uh, master, uh, another uh, uh, degree in, uh, in uh, landscape architecture. Uh, and uh, I stayed in reserves, and I was commanding officer of a squadron that. Uh, Alameda, uh, where we trained, and uh, and then I transferred down to uh, 
after I got graduated, I, I uh, got a job with the county of the uh, Parks Department and uh, doing uh, landscaping for uh, golf courses and, uh, and uh, public buildings. And uh, I still uh, stayed in reserves and uh, had a squadron out to Los Alamitos uh, in the fighter squadron. I flew S4, F4Us. And um, uh, after 21 years, I retired. And you were, uh, now in, the, in between that was uh, Korea. Yep. Uh, what happened when the Korean War broke out? The Chinese well, came and they, uh, they, uh, we had, every year we used to uh, fly back to uh, Cherry Point, North Carolina for uh, uh, maneuvers for about a week. Uh, we'd fly back, back to, uh, uh, we'd take, take our planes back to, uh, to uh, uh, Cherry Point, North Carolina, for, for uh, maneuvers. So you fly cross and country? While, yeah. And while, while we were there, uh, the, the commandant uh, said that, uh, came down, and there was, this Korean thing was just getting going. And he said, we don't expect to call you uh, uh, men until uh, December. And this was about like uh, August. And uh, when we came back, uh, I went to work the next day, and uh, I got a, Patty and my wife got a telegram telling me to report for active duty uh, the next day. And uh, so I had to leave my squadron, which I leave my my job, which was pretty easy to do with a, with a working for the county. And uh, knew, I knew that uh, my job would be there when I got through. And uh, so uh, was reported back out at uh, uh, Los Alamitos. And uh, that time uh, they decided uh, who was going to be going right to Korea, which uh, was almost right away. And uh, fortunately, I didn't make that. And uh, so I went uh, later, and I was over there probably eight months, I guess. And, and I was a logistics officer of a, of a group. Of an air group? Mm -hmm. uh, what's your group was that? Um, I can't remember what mag it was. Uh, can't remember. Uh, they had um, I think they, uh, out there they had just one uh, fighter squadron mm -hmm. that's all and so they had the whole air group of one squadron mm -hmm. one fighter squadron mm -hmm. and so at that point uh, and where were you stationed in, in Korea uh, first at Busan uh, for a short time and then I moved up to uh, I think it was K K eighteen, which was up north, and uh, then uh, they had F four uh, F four U's at that time. Mm -hmm. So all, all flying mm -hmm. there and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what kind of what kind of uh, uh, assignment did your squad uh, have? Uh, they had uh, uh, attacks on railroads and. Uh, uh, oh, I guess anything, I guess. Uh, it was quite a few, quite a few, uh, quite a few uh, t attacks. And they were uh, support of Marines, uh, yeah. Army, and et cetera? Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, I think we were more support, support of Marines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And throughout. And yeah. Was, it, was any, any of your group involved in the Chosun area? When that? Uh, I think that was uh, after I left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, your your air group was there for about eight, eight or nine months mm -hmm. until the major buildup when mm -hmm. you're moving back home because mm -hmm. that had kind of seesaw. Yeah. Well, they, they, in fact, they thought that uh, there was going to be a uh, armistice or uh, there'd be an agreement uh, about the last two three months we were there. They were back and forth, you know. And and but that was just before the Chinese got involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then they could push back. You yeah. didn't get called back again after that. No. Okay. 
And then w when you're in stolen reserves, now it's 51, 52, and you and you're with, uh, and you came back to LA, mm -hmm. and uh, this army is. Uh, what was your assignment here at the South? Um, you were promoted lieutenant colonel in there, weren't you? Uh, yes, and um, I still had the squadron, had a squadron out in Los Alamitos, and um, then um, then I retired, and uh, that was it. And, uh, what, what year did you retire? I think it was about nineteen. Uh, nineteen sixty. Mm -hmm. At that point, and and, uh, and and you had just been promoted a few years before to, to full colonel. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And and now along the way, you had another child. Mm -hmm. uh, what well, was your second child born? Uh, second second child was born uh, <coughs> uh, after I got back from Korea. We had a uh, difference of 10 years between the two ch uh, two girls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, that was it. And wh what did the girls do? The, what did the girls do? Well, one of them, uh, she has a own business uh, in uh, preschool. She formed it in her home, and uh, then they uh, acquired a, a large building, and. Uh, they send the preschool program all over, all over uh, Hawaii and and uh, United States and uh, Canada, and uh, they uh, supply the materials and everything that they can do this home mm -hmm. uh, home school stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other one, uh, they're married to a painting uh, painter, and she uh, works as a uh, checker and. Uh, in uh, one of the markets. Oh, that's right. And so. And they're all local. Yeah. And you have some uh, uh -huh. grandchildren. Yeah, we have uh, we have uh, two uh, two grandchildren from the my, uh, the younger daughter, and I have two uh, grandchildren from the uh, from the older daughter. Yeah, any great. And uh, they have uh, and one of the one of the grandchildren is uh, married, and they just recently had twins, and uh, they have three, so we have three grandchildren. Great grandchildren, right. great, great grandchildren. Great grandchildren. Great grandchildren. Yeah. Now along the way, along the way, you you uh, uh, got in the Christ Christmas tree business. Yeah. Tell me about the Christmas well, tree business. Well, I uh, <coughs> a fellow uh, when I was living in Santa Ana, he had a Christmas tree lot, and uh, we decided to go together and buy some property out here in Atwood and set up another one. Now, where is Atwood geographically? Uh, out by Placentia, which is just about. Uh, uh, four miles uh, from here, and so we bought this property, and uh, we were uh, uh, planting uh, these uh, Christmas trees, uh, which were Monterey pine, uh, and one of the first ones in, or in Orange County. In fact, I guess any place in the in the, in the would be Monterey pine. Anyway, we uh, bought this property, and uh, and uh, uh, they had the water uh, water rights uh, from a well. And uh, we uh, planted those things about uh, six feet apart, and uh, uh, we sold just about all of every year. Uh, but we could we could uh, have a tree for sale in two years, and uh, so we just had this thing going. We had it for about uh, probably at least ten years. And uh, uh, then we sold the property. And my wife was getting tired of working out there, and especially I, I had a, had a, a job, and I, uh, my work was usually just out there on weekends. So uh, uh, most of my weekends were either spent out on the reserve <laughs> thing or or, or uh, out at the field. <laughs> but it was kind of nice to uh, uh, to be out, get out there and have, not have to. Worry about personnel or anything, you know, just those trees, you know, prune them and take care of them. Well, how did the Christmas tree uh, tree lots? I know people buy a Christmas tree that's yeah. cut from someplace, but how did the Christmas tree lot work? In other words, you cut it down, they take it home, and how long was two years well, more to grow another tree up? Uh, well, uh, what I did, uh, after we cut it down, uh, the, uh, there'd be uh, growth that come up along the side. And then I'd plant another uh, 
just a seedling next to it. And if that thing grew faster from the tree that was cut down, I'd train that into it. And I would, I, I would move the other one or take another one out. But uh, it was quite profitable. We, uh, we were, were originally selling for about a dollar a foot. And we saw we'd sell a seven foot tree for seven dollars. <laughs> But it wasn't long before their their uh, prices went up considerably, and uh, we got out. Uh, we got out uh, because of the fact that uh, my wife didn't want to do this anymore. And, uh, and, uh, she didn't do any of the physical work, but uh, be out there selling while I was I was in, in out working in, in Los Angeles and. And we had a lot of people stealing trees, and uh, it was discouraging. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Not at the right time, then. Yeah. Now, you were with the county as, as, a, as a landscape architect, mm -hmm. uh, county of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And uh, when did you retire from the county? Uh, <coughs> 19, uh, probably 1960. Uh, Yeah, I think I was 59 years old. So I was born in 1917. So that's it. <laughs> and uh, uh, probably at least uh, four, four, pretty close to 40 years ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. so and, and you had so all. And what were your job as uh, still that landscape architect? Was it this? Uh, yes. Um, actually, we got transferred f to the facilities department, and uh, they had architects and. Uh, engineers and uh, landscape architects and uh, I was in charge of the department and uh, we had about the uh, oh, landscape architecture department and we had about uh, um, eight landscape architects working mm -hmm. and uh, as I said we, we uh, designed golf courses and uh, for the county and uh, you know, public buildings and that was really interesting mm -hmm. now that you've retired uh, you've been very busy but I wanted to if you could uh, describe these, oh, okay. point them out for me. Many people have never, right. never seen uh, okay. what uh, you tell people their resume is. Okay. <laughs> right. So people have done. This, uh, this is the gold wings, of course, we wore as a naval uh, pilot. Now tell me the difference between crewman and, and pilot. Yeah. And this is a um, looks a signature for, signature for a colonel that we wore on our. our our cap and on our collars. And uh, this is the Navy Cross up here uh, from the Battle of Midway. And this, this is a Distinguished Service Cross here from uh, our, the uh, activity at uh, Guadalcanal. And this is uh, the, the uh, Air Medal with two gold stars, which is, means three Air Medals. And you got an Air Medal for five attacks against enemy aircraft and uh, enemy. And then this is um, Pearl Harbor uh, medal. This is Pacific uh, medal. Um, I forgot what that is. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, this is Korea. These are Korea things. The United Nations, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what they ever thought of anything. No. So and then, uh, the, you tell me the medals on there. Oh, okay. And this, these are the medals. There's the Navy Cross. Uh, here's a Distinguished uh, Flying Cross, the, the Air Medal. Uh, this is a medal I got um, for saving somebody's life when I was a Boy Scout. Uh, uh, somebody got in the deep water and I dived in and pulled them out and gave them artificial respiration. And um, and uh, I think that's a president. Was it a president of unit citation or not? I don't know. You have to turn them over to read the back part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I got anything back. I got to do that. <laughs> and uh, uh, show the wings there. And the wings are from the uniform. Uh, pardon? Oh uniform? yeah, this is uh. uh, uh uh, the wings that we wear on our, our green uniform. 
And this is one we pinned on our uh, white uniform and on our khaki uniform. Uh, I had forgotten what these other medals are. I think the blue one is the Korean United Nations one. It is? The United Nations. Oh. Oh. I don't know. And uh, this is a new medal. It's not a Korean defense medal. That uh, in two more weeks, uh, in July, we're having a special ceremony down at Patriotic Hall uh, for Korean War vets. Oh. And uh, the Consul General will be there to present the Korean defense medal. Hmm. Uh, to all the service recipients, because it was never awarded. The time you got those, it had not been awarded because it was given by the Korean government who couldn't oh. wear them. Oh. And so now they're being uh, being presented by the Consul General. So I'll make sure that you get the invitation to that. Oh, thank uh, you. For this very special occasion. You know, one of the things I usually end up, uh, kind of when we have a chance to summarize all this, and everybody has peaks and valleys in their lives. As what? Everybody peaks and valleys, yeah. Peaks and valleys, you know? And, and so I uh, ask, what are some of those... Uh, valleys that you had, and what are some of the peaks that you had? Well, of course, when I got married and uh, had my children, those were those were peaks. Uh, I think surviving Midway was a peak. Uh, our valleys. I don't think I had too many. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, I've always had enough uh, to take care of what we want, what, what we, how we live, and uh, do things I want to do. And uh, uh, I think uh, 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 one of the peaks was uh, my uh, uh, promotion to uh, colonel. I think I told you about the uh, the speed of uh, my promotions. That when we were out at Midway, I uh, was a second lieutenant, um, and I was promoted to a first lieutenant when I soldered my my gold uh, uh, second lieutenant things. And then uh, a, about a week or so later, we got, I got promoted to captain, and I soldered two of those together. So uh, anyway, there was of course no there was no way of of <laughs> Have, having a, a buying any of that out there, and so that's what that's what we did. My, my friends were the same situation. Uh, so so we, if we were captured, we'd been captured as captains instead of <laughs> second lieutenants, <laughs> which uh, I, I sure would have made much difference. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was uh, uh, that was quite an unsettling time. Yeah. So to survive that would have been quite a yep. quite a thing. So those are, that's a real peak. Now, one of the, you know, when we when we uh, uh, put this together, what we'll try and just make sure you have copies of all this. But on behalf of the military museum, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here with you today, Colonel, and particularly uh, our military history educational project and uh, our oral history efforts. Uh, to uh, thank you for your hospitality and opportunity to visit with you and take all this time. I, I, I enjoyed <laughs> it, and I, I I appreciate you spending your time doing it. Well, we, we feel it's, it's very valuable that we can relate to it. If you were, if you were going to, uh, you know, have something that was sage, you know, you know you, the sage is the person on the hill, you know, you've seen those cartoons, mm -hmm. everybody comes up to the guru and asks them some great answer. And, and uh, uh, from your life experience, what is it that you, you feel that, that uh, this generation, new kids, mm -hmm. and their great-grandchildren are brand new ones, and... Uh, how might your experience be able to help them? Well, I think hard work. Don't be afraid of hard work. Um, find something that you're interested in that you uh, enjoy doing. Uh, there's nothing worse than uh, uh, getting an occupation that uh, that's a drudgery to have to go to work. Uh, my, my only drudgery that I had, uh, uh, I, I really enjoyed my work. I, I didn't make a lot of money at it, but I enjoyed doing it. Was uh, making plans of uh, uh, and crea and creating. Uh, I think if you can get any do anything uh, in the creative uh, uh, mind, uh, you'll be uh, much happier. Uh, important. It's very important to 
to uh, choose an occupation as something you like doing. And that's what you would pass on to your great grandchildren. That's right. Yeah. And I think honesty is a, a certainly a, a, a attribute, attribute you should have. Um, and um, just just get in there and and, and work and uh, uh, make a living for yourself and do the things you enjoy doing. I think. That's right. Well, we're officially, well, officially ended, and it's been very nice. I'm glad it wasn't too painful. No, <laughs> no. I, enjoy, I enjoyed it. <laughs> well, we'll try I'll put this stuff up later. <laughs> yes, we'll try uh, uh, would you, can I, can I uh, put some soup on for you?